but I think I got close, but we could try to do that together. That sounds cool. Or this diagram here is one that Derek sent, uh, or it's from some paper that he sent. I probably should have dropped the whole link. I probably yeah, still I think that's, oh, I think that's from his uh, paper with Kyle. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. So what this basically shows is w w it would be fun to transcribe this into the notation we've usually used. This shows like, their demonstration of a trivial example of CBC Casper not being live. And then I thought there was one other thing I had dropped up here, but. Uh, I have a question about that. Uh, when you say uh, Casper is not live, but uh, Vlad is saying that uh, if, if you choose like a uh, uh, estimator that, uh, that is not alive, we have uh, brought, uh, like a consensus that is not live. So Vlad's never, never uh, 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 told that you know Casper is, is alive always, you know. Yeah, that's so that's right. The question is: Is, is this like a, a estimator that works like that and it's not alive? Did you say estimate? Uh, yeah, estimator. Oh, you're saying like does the liveness come down to the choice of the estimator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting in, in, question. In Casper, in Casper, was talking about that? So I'm I'm not sure. Am I missing something or? Oh, I didn't realize that. That makes total sense, though. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it makes sense that all the parameters to the uh, algorithm would, would play into it, right? Like all the all the parameters in the protocol are going to have some sort of say in the liveness of it, or at least that, that make, it seems like it should. Yeah. Yeah. And you can yeah. choose, you definitely can choose uh, an estimator that is not alive. And mm -hmm. that, that is valid claim. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's a good point. Okay. I see what you're saying. Let's see. So I think that picture came from here. I was thinking of that picture in the case of binary consensus with the estimator that we've always used, which is like score every, the most recent things you've seen and then estimate with the majority. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, this paper is called Incorrect by Construction, or this memo or whatever. It's not that long. <laughs> Derek, Derek, Derek was saying, like, I didn't really like that title. I just wanted to show the example, but Kyle wanted to make it kind of. <laughs> but uh, OK, so he says, we can starve Casper by delaying message delivery one time slot. Dashed lines indicate repudiation. So I think repudiation is when, like, I estimated one, but now I've seen new information and I have to change my estimate to zero or, or vice versa. Um, he says the blocks are irrelevant, so we label vertices by the blocks publisher. Hmm. So there's, there's four validators here that he's numbered zero through three. And then there's this G is the Genesis block. So I, the idea, I guess, is at the exact same time, zero and one create blocks. And then shortly thereafter, at the same time, two sees zero's block and, and three sees one's block. And so this block and this one are not super interesting. Those are just like, I didn't have my own initial block. I saw Alice say one, I'm also gonna say one kind of things. And then I think here's where it gets interesting. So here's zero. Of course, citing back their other block that they, you know, it would be an equivocation not to have this arrow. And then they've also seen three's block, which, you know, indirectly means they've seen one's block. And so now they're outweighed, right? One and three are both voting whatever this thing on the right is, whereas only zero had said the other thing. So zero repudiates. But, you know, then symmetrically at the same time, one does the other thing. Um, and then, okay, I, I feel like maybe it'll still be interesting to talk through this one. So at this point, what has two seen? Oh, so it looks like 2C is zero's new estimate. Oh. Right, because so, yeah. 2 had already seen zero's old, uh, old estimate, the left estimate, uh, but is now seeing the, the right estimate. Right, okay. Yeah. So 2, so now at this point, 2 says, oh, zero switched, and 1 and 3 have always been over here, so I'm all alone left on the other side. I'm coming over. Yeah. And at the same time, W3 says the other thing, and so now we've switched. One and three are on the left, and zero and two are on the right. Mm -hmm. And I guess it, and it goes on and on like this. Yeah. So, he had text about this. 
Yeah, so are they are they claiming that like the estimator doesn't even matter? In that case, because like estimator never came up in that discussion, right? That's right. Estimator is never even in this paper. Little yeah, it was paper. just something about the delayed time slots. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, what are they actually showing here? I didn't even think about that when I interpreted it before. So he says, consider a synchronous, reliable network of four honest, equally weighted validators where any message sent must be received within two time slots and messages are never dropped, duplicated, or forged. So that seems like, I think he was saying like, this is a pretty genuine, like this is the network that you describe in the textbook before you even start to worry about like latency and everything. And he's saying like, even in this case, it's, it's not live, but, um, yeah, like, are there different estimates? Maybe there are different estimators that would have like made zero not flip flop there so fast. Yeah, maybe you can you can like easily detect uh, this in, in estimate and just say okay, this this is what 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 is happening and. Yeah. Um. So, okay, so, uh, well, maybe we should think of this then. Is there any estimator we can think of? Because we've seen a few, at least, and we could design a couple other ones. Is there any estimator where this argument is not the case, where this doesn't hold? Um. I mean, what if you take like a really stupid estimator that's like, look at all the, you know, uh, latest messages from all the validators and choose the estimate that has like the least votes for it. Oh, that's interesting. So then, we, yeah, then it's validator zero never switch sides, right? But it also sounds like you would never come to consensus on anything because you'd have half of the network in favor of one and half of the network in favor of the other. But I don't know if that's yeah. like a, a necessary side condition or whatever yeah yeah um so i i had told derek that to me this seemed like one but of those things yeah go ahead well i'm, I'm, I'm thinking that in, in this case we have four validators four yeah. validators yeah. so and each have a weight of one right because yeah. we don't care about uh, the about weights so right how can they get to consensus? Because therefore, you know, if two are on the, on the one side. Hmm. Yeah, you mean like ever? How could they ever yeah. reach consensus? Yeah, 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 on, on anything. Yeah. Well, let's do a, let's do a, let's draw this up real quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see something in the chat, but I can't get that back. There it is. I put it in oh, this. Jim did drop a, a drawing. Oh, perfect. Thanks, oh, these Jim. are great diagrams. Oh, those are, dude, I should show you guys this real quick. Um, ooh, is that Jeremy? Jeremy, what's up, man? Hi. How's it going, dude? Oh, hi. This one in the top left we made together a few weeks ago, and then these ones down here was, oh, this was the other thing I thought maybe we could talk about, were illustrations of the idea to never build on empty blocks. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, let's take this as a template. I like that. Boom. Oh, nice, Jim. Ah. Oh, you can change the shape of the background? I didn't realize that. Dude, I'm like the Google Draw expert now. Google Draw Guru. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just see what we can do here. Oops. Oh boy. Um, so in this diagram, we have zero and one both producing blocks at the same time. So we're, no weight labels because they're all weighted the same. Uh, All right, so that looks, this looks good so far, I think, right? We've got these guys both producing blocks. And oh, in fact, maybe we should, for easier symmetry, make it 
a different like this. So those two both produce blocks. And then um, easier on B1 maybe. Oh yeah. Just yeah, because like, dude, if we like change one number and then you know 20, 20 blocks in, we'll be like, what's going on? Yeah, totally, totally. Okay, so new validator, right? That's why we're in a new column here. So the new validator says um, something like, uh, let's get an arrow here, like this. Oops. And then likewise over here. Oh, I've got too many columns. Okay, hold on. Hold on. This can be fixed. Yeah, and that one should be, that one's B2 and that one you're on now is B3, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, cool. Great. Okay, right, and oh. those are being produced at the same time, right? Right, right, that's right. Oh, which one of these do I want? That one. Okay. So, all right, so what do we do to make this happen now? Oh, and really, we should have estimates on here if we're playing binary consensus. Mm -hmm. Right, don't these things need an estimate? Yeah, we could do like, yeah, ones, ones on the left, zeros on the right or something. All right. Uh, okay, so so we've got these top four. So zero goes next. Uh, so that's a, this person. Yeah. And this is going to be called block four. And then the question is, what is the estimate? And what have they seen? Well, they've definitely seen their own block. Yeah. They've seen their own, and they've seen uh, block three. It looks like. And they've seen block three. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Okay, cool. So then now we've got to just answer like, all right, well, what's the estimate for that thing then? Right. Um, and so they've seen, well, I guess it's, I guess it's zero, right? Because they've seen two zeros over here yeah. and only one one over here. Well, but that comes down to the estimator, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. All right. But either way, like typical, typical binary consensus, that's definitely zero. Yeah. And that, oh, and oh, it's going to start looking symmetric finally. That's good. So I think we can do this then. Somewhere over here, this belongs. There it is. Perfect. Oh, yeah, I guess they're not, they're not numbering the blocks either. They're just saying the validators, but no. Yeah, yeah. Not like B5. Right. No. And then with our normal estimator, for the same reasons, we get a one there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're, we've done three of these rows. Maybe we'll do one more just to, to show. Whoa, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Okay, so what do these things see then? B6 to B4, right? So B6 right. would be zero still, right? Well, uh, I, well, here, okay, we should do this then, I guess, just to make sure. Oh, that's ginormous. Well, and I say that because only because assuming that B6 only looks at B4, then yeah, all the other, it all the other blocks kind of just point towards zero, so it just kind of outweighs it. One one thing that might be good to do is label which validator is which. I know it's like W0, W1, W2, W3, yeah. on, but yeah. it, it's getting confusing, like keeping track of everything now. Totally. As always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. 
Yeah, and we're in the fourth row now. So it's the W3 and W2, yeah, that are issuing their blocks. That makes sense. Yeah, but this, this makes it easy now because it looks like B6 goes to B3 and B7 goes to B2. B6 goes to B3. Yeah. Is that right? Now I'm questioning myself. Uh, so, so W1 is about to make his second block, right? Does, so that's here. Yeah. And uh, it points back to his own block, of course. All right, well, we can definitely do that. Is this the second block? Or, or this on the, on the, on the left? Uh, this w, one. W1. Yeah, I see. This is, this is the third one. What was that? Uh, this is the third one. You have you have uh, one on the top, or or this is. Oh yeah 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 yeah. We're not on W one's block yet. Yeah, we should be making a W two or W three block, right? Uh, wait a second. Um, I don't oh, think the tower. I don't think the tower validators are actually numbered because we did the first blocks were W zero and W one. So I think the last row is actually W one. Oh God. Yeah, first, okay. sorry, last, column, last column. Yeah. It's a little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. now it's even more okay. confusing, but I think it'll be really clear. Here. <laughs> so who is this? Uh, let's figure that out. So there were two blocks issued in the second round from W two and W three. Um, right. So W2 saw W0, so that's W2, yeah. So 0, 2, 3, 1. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. Now we got it. All right. In hindsight, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to make it so symmetrical, but that's okay. It's, it's okay. All right. Now I think we can figure out what's going on here. So, so W2 and 3, so we're on this row. Yeah, we're, we're on the fourth, the fourth block issuance or time slot or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so W3 is seeing W1 in, in itself, obviously. W3 sees W1, okay. Oh, but I think those last blocks we drew were not right. Wait, These no, two at the bottom? Maybe they were, hold on, here, I'll, I'll check it. You keep doing what you're doing and I'll, I'll right. check to make sure we're, we're doing things right. It looks nice and symmetrical by the way I drew it right now. <laughs> yeah. <it does. laughs> Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. That looks good. No, I don't think it's right. Wait, one sees two, yeah. These two arrows are backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah. B7 should go to B5. Yeah. Yeah, and B6 to B4, yep. There we go. Okay. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh, and then our estimate's correct. Uh, oh, man. Yes. No, these estimates need to change. Oh, yeah. That, that looks right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. So, Jeremy, since we started this before you jumped in, this is a figure that Derek, the dude from Pyrofex, gave us, um, or just published, not gave specifically to us. And uh, it shows what I think is a binary consensus game um, in a different notation. So now we've translated it back to our notation. Um, and so the idea, as we can see, is like, all right, so. These, every single person here is flip-flopping their vote every time, and so we're never going to reach consensus. And then, okay, so Tomislav, if I understood what you were saying, maybe you were saying like, okay, now that we've got this thing drawn out, we can think of a different estimator other than the one we used to create all of these estimates that actually would still allow consensus. Yeah, yeah. So wait, I have, I have a question because I remember something here. Um, so... Uh, with regards to liveness, though, we have to be talking about blockchain consensus, right? Because uh, with with binary consensus, we're necessarily uh, coming to agreement and the game is done, right? Okay, that's a good point. But when you say not necessarily, in, in this case, is this really necessarily? 
I mean, you have four validators each have one vote, you know? Yeah. And yeah, and so I'm trying to figure out why it seems like it doesn't matter whether they're playing binary consensus or blockchain consensus here, which seems weird, right? Because if, if uh, liveness is necessarily not guaranteed for binary consensus, then how are we blurring the lines so much between blockchain consensus and binary consensus? Yeah, okay, that's a great point. So okay. I don't know if liveness is the right word in binary consensus, but there, there's some kind of property that we want, which is, yeah, we don't want to make progress forever. That's definitely true. Yeah. You're right about that. But we do want to come to consensus. Yeah, I think that's... Yeah, we want to settle on zero or one, and we're not able to do that so far. Yeah, right. But you, you have, you, you started with zero and one from two different validators. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 you're searching for the final solution. But how can you get the final solution between zero and one? Oh. Well, if we, if we didn't have yeah, this yeah. unfortunate way that the blocks were coming in every time, it's easy, right? Like if B2 had seen different stuff, if when this block was made, they had seen some of this stuff, it would have happened in short order or even now like if the next block comes down here and instead of carefully choosing our arrows according to Derek's diagram we just put them kind of willy-nilly probably will come to consensus shortly oh, yeah, you're right. yeah. hold on a second um so so let's think about an even simpler game so just two validators and it's you know binary consensus or whatever, and uh, they have equal weights, and they always see each other's messages, and they uh, we start the game. One of them says zero, one of them says one. So now there's equal weight on both zero and one, and um, you know so like okay, so validator one and validator two, right? They they both they both uh, say their estimate. One of them says zero, one of them says one. Uh, so then. Like uh, maybe I should draw a picture for what I'm. Thinking. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to help you get it drawn in here. If you wanted to jump in. So, while, while he draws the picture out, I just have like a cute or a curious like question slash potential solution. Yeah. So yeah, I wonder good. if it's possible in the protocol to. So you, earlier you said we can't have empty blocks, right? Well, we didn't, can't we're agnostic about or, blocks right now. We haven't made a. But, but yeah, but okay, if that makes your question interesting, let's assume no empty blocks. So let's, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, that whenever they can't come to, what the fuck is this person doing? Sorry, I'm driving. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, um, so what would happen if the, so whenever you have a stalemate like that, where the consensus itself creates an empty blocks and generates a random number between, you know, one and zero, and assuming that there's like some weight, it takes all the weight and like finds a medium number and that's how it gives its answer. So it's like, it kind of like bre breaks the stalemate, but at the same time though, no one's like angry because it's, you know, something in the right direction. Okay, so. Uh, but the code then it generated the random number. Mm. One, of the, one of the validators, sorry. I mean, so like even like right here in the in the, like in the middle column, like assuming that they still hit a one or a zero, like right in the middle, the um, algorithm says, "No, I'm just going to create an empty block that just says, you know, let's just say one." So the next block that's being made pulls from, you know, block seven or something like that, or whatever the new block should be, and just goes from there. So you're saying, Jeremy, you're saying someone makes a new block in here. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. Are you, so hold on the, the phone here. I don't want to pull your attention totally to a diagram if you're driving. Did you say you're driving? Yeah, I am, but I'm on like Bluetooth. <laughs> Plus, I'm not actually looking at the screen. Okay, I'm just like looking forward. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> So the, the concept of a, a non-deterministic estimator is a little bit interesting, um, you know, where there's some randomness. Yeah, Tomislav, my thought is the same as yours. Like, well, where does the entropy come from, right? Like, how do I generate the random number? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you tell me that uh, you came up with a random number and you say, here it is, 
Why would they trust you, bro? <laughs> well, so the thing is, I think, like, how would the concept be, but, like, in the protocol, it's built to where it has a counter of every time it, you know, a certain, like, a certain range keeps going to zero one zero one zero one during the, let's just say, fourth or fifth round of no consensus, I'm just going to create the um, uh, random block or, like, a third block, an unbiased block, from our, you know, from the algorithm and just placing it in there. How, yeah, how are you going to create an unbiased one, though? That's the tricky part. You well, know, like if you're so it, it, generates an un, it generates a random number, either one or zero. And assuming if there's like weights involved, it just takes mm -hmm. the, all the um, potential weights that are there now, finds the mm -hmm. medium, and goes with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's. So that's kind of what our estimator does, right? So like we looked at these at this diagram. I'm not looking at Isaac's yet, um, where like it was tied two to two. Oh wait, is that true? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, like an input uh, for the for the estimator, like a, the the set of the values that the estimator are choosing are like binary zero one. So he he, he really pr proposes this uh, this number as a like a correct number. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, when someone makes a block and says an estimate, they're saying like, yeah, according to this estimator, I've calculated this correct result. From, from the all, possibles, all possible values. And this is like a zero and one. Mm -hmm. in, in a sense, yeah, I see this as a, some kind of generator for, for, for these binary numbers. Oh, oh, wow. Can I mean, we consider like a validator's, okay, how about this? What if we consider like an individual validator's history of blocks? So what if we look at like W2 here? W2 has a history of blocks that right now creates a bit string of one zero. As this game gets longer, every, S, every validator is gonna have some bit string. As, um, I was going to say maybe we can use that or something like it as a source of like pseudo entropy, but it, you really have a lot of control Ooh. over it, I guess. Like I don't, if I didn't want my next bit to be one, I just need to, you know, oh. set up my blocks, my justifications accordingly. It's not really random. I have a lot oh, of control. Oh, but yeah, if, if you have some, some kind of a function that you define uh, in front and when you go in this situation, you, you can calculate like a, from, from this function, you can calculate, uh, for, for, for example, first byte, first uh, uh, bit from this number, and if it's zero or one, it's, it's, it's not uh, non-deterministic, but you must end up in, in, in one direction, you know, like the break the symmetry. Okay, so, so say it one more time. You're talking about this left figure still, or the right one? Yeah, we can, we can, we can choose, for example, uh, one path of, uh, of, of this value vector. And he can supply this value to some kind of function that will I don't know, sum these values or anything. Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. choose this value for the, for the next. And uh, uh, the same uh, uh, is valid for, for, the, for the other validators. But I'm not sure if this is like a <laughs> proof to, to get to the, to the different value. So, hey, Joshi, is this similar to what we were talking about? Oh, it was a while ago um, about using hash functions to like break ties in in like a binary Casper or something like that. Yeah, I remember. I remember talking about that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Thomas Love, I didn't feel like I 100 percent understood your idea yet. I think I get a big a big part. of it. So, like, imagine I'm W2 here. This is me. Right. I'm going to create a block. What are you suggesting that I do now? Uh, well, I'm, I'm continuing on, on your thoughts uh, uh, about yeah, right. the, the, uh, we can use the, the existing value, for, for example, one and one, and say, OK, we can sort it or, or I don't know. Which, yeah, which, one, which ones were you looking at real quick? This one uh, and this uh, one? B, B2 and uh, B0, yeah. Yeah, OK, right, right. So here I am. I'm making this block so far. It has this path up here, right? And then, yeah, so we've got some entropy. We've got one, one. 
Yeah, but now I'm thinking that I'm really talking about a different estimator. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm happy yeah. to talk about a different estimator. So yeah, right. So this is in the vein of can we think of an estimator where this situation isn't a problem, right? Now, now, now I'm thinking that if we can use the the values from the from the estimator, not only the like a we are, we are now looking at, uh, at uh, these values as, as, as different, uh, like a, uh, we have zero and one, but uh, maybe we can get to the, to the different conclusion. Maybe, maybe two zeros are, are really, are really uh, one in our estimator. If we, if we use XOR function, we can have different result. Yeah, yeah. Oh! So because you're saying look at all the justifications and XOR them together and that's your estimate? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in this block, I have two justifications, a zero and a one, and when I XOR those, I would get a one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do, should we go, what do you want to do next? Should we try to go through and see if that leads to consensus or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's try so okay so starting from the start we'll leave these two alone oh xor is weird though because then you see two ones and you're like zero but That's then you true. see two zeros and but I, I'm you're doing like this, one i don't know if i gonna keep what's that uh I, i'm thinking maybe it's not symmetric but so we can just break the time uh, but XOR is a symmetric function. What does symmetric mean? What's that? What does symmetric mean? Uh, well, so I assume he's talking about oh, the, yeah. the symmetry in the diagram. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, right. But I'm thinking oh. that, that XOR is it's balanced, right? Like if it sees a, a zero and a one or a one and a zero, it gives you the same response. And if it sees two zeros and two ones, it gives you the same response. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But but yeah, any but, any asymmetry in the function, you're you're going to be able to exploit that. It seems like because uh, you, yeah, would, right. you would know that something has an advantage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so you really don't want uh, uh, non symmetry in in the function. Well, yeah, and so I think uh, one one thing that Josh and I were talking about, and I think it kind of pertains to what we're talking about now, is uh, you know, so so like for example, um. Uh, let's see here. Well, I guess there's never a case where what I'm trying to suggest would even help in this diagram. In the one that I drew, it would. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I think I see a fundamental difference between the one I drew and the one uh, that Derek proposed here. Yeah, what are you, what are you looking at? Yeah, so um, yeah, if you want to talk about uh, the, the second diagram a little bit. Um, so basically in the second diagram, the, the same beginning, right? Like two validators, uh, they both propose uh, the different values. So like zero and one, uh, they both have equal weight. And then essentially like, uh, let's look at block two. So uh, the first validator is gonna see their own block and the other block. And so at this point, we don't really, I mean, we could, we could go one, we could go zero. Basically the estimate could be anything, but let's just keep it what it is because their estimate was already one. Uh, so then, uh, looking at block three, which is issued at exactly the same time as block two, uh, they see block zero and block one. And, uh, since their original estimate was zero, they go with zero again. And then it's basically the same nonsense over and over and over. Yeah. Right. But so this is similar, but simpler, but there is not no flipping. Yeah, there's no, there's no flipping. Exactly. So that's, that's the fundamental difference that I realized as I, as I was drawing it up. Well, so I, that's because of the estimator you chose. Like we've actually talked about this edge case a lot. If, mm -hmm. and we had talked about the rules, like when there's a tie score wise, I, I was always saying, do whatever you want, but right. other valid rules were, would be when there's a tie, do the same thing you did last time or when there's a tie, I flip flop. Yeah. And if we choose that last one, then you'd have the same flip-flopping behavior that we have on the left. Oh, that yeah, that's a good point, right? Like choose whatever the other person said if there's a tie. Yeah, right. 
What, what do you think? Can we have the same situation with three validators? Um, then we can make. Oh, a that's a good question. If if we start with the two validators that that are saying one and zero, we can we can have flipping. I I, I think. Do it. Yeah, I think we can do it too. I think it'll just be uh, it'll be cyclic, and it'll just be like they're they're shifting each time or something. But uh, uh, do you think that this is like the same as uh, this one with the two? Uh, I don't know, honestly. Well, let's just do a little exploring. Oh yeah, you're gonna try to draw a diagram there. I was gonna try to draw one on a whiteboard to see if I could figure it out. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that might go faster. But uh, do you familiar with uh, hash graph uh, consensus? Cool. Uh, I've read about Hashgraph a little bit. I'd love to know more about it. Do you know much about it? Well, this guy talks about consensus like a, 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 a really in details. And uh, he was saying that uh, his consensus is like a ritual voting. And Wait, he, is, uh, ha Hashgraph is the gossiping gossip one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah okay. but it's, very, it's very similar. And, and he's he, he explaining uh, like a different consensus protocols. And uh, he's saying that the voting is like the best. Uh, you, you have everything, uh, but uh, it's, it's uh, the slowest. So he talks about this uh, like a virtual voting that is like much faster and uh, uh, like all the benefits from, from uh, voting. But, and I don't completely understand. Uh, uh, and I didn't, I didn't like a look in, in the paper how it uh, works exactly. I've also not looked at the paper and I, I know Hashgraph from the Epicenter podcast. Um, yes, did, did you hear that, Tomislav? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think that I. I, I was okay. Looking. Yeah. Well, my that's all I know about it. So I'm very far from an expert to Hashgraph. My impression after that podcast was that it seemed really similar to Casanova, in the sense that they were they were both making this um, claim that you don't have to manually cast votes. The the bummer about about explicit voting is like. If I'm going to vote, I need to send my vote to all four of you guys. And when you vote, you send it to all four of us. And so as our validator set grows, our message set grows as n squared. So it's, it's, not, uh, it's not good behavior, like good scaling behavior. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, what I thought was the similar thing between Casanova and Hashgraph, then everybody is synchronizing their view of the DAG. So everybody has the same view of the DAG except for at the very bottom, right? For the, except for the recent stuff where we haven't settled on all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And because I can look back, you know, 20 blocks ago and see that I, you know, I, I can see like, here's the block Tomislav created 20 blocks ago. Here's all of its justification. So I know exactly what he knew at the time. I don't need him to tell me his vote. I know the algorithm. I know how he was going to calculate that vote. And I know his view of the DAG at the time. I can just calculate what his vote was going to be without him having to send it to everybody. And then likewise for, you know, Bob and Charlie. And, and is this very similar to Casper? But uh, in, in Casper, uh, you're looking only the latest, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know. I'd love to dig into Hashgraph. That could be fun. Yeah. Uh, Isaac, did you come up with anything interesting for three validators? I, I'm not figuring out how to arrange the the messages yet. Yeah. Also, do you guys already seen like our refer any uh, resources to what you guys were just talking about? You said uh, they were talking about on Epicenter. Yeah. Yeah. I like to uh, look at that. Uh, I, have, I have a few so. links I can, I can send later. Do you know that podcast, Jeremy? Um, in passing, I've heard of it, but I just never, I just probably need to put it on my favorites or something. Yeah, it's a good one, man. It is. It's also, heads up, I already parked, so we're good now. I can look at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. <laughs> um, I'm just going to pop this link in here. Oh yeah, that's the one, Mance Harmon. So. 
Oh, sweet. Okay, so one thing that I'm still not totally clear on is like, this, this thing that Derek sent makes a lot of sense to me. I, I don't know exactly how it would, what does it mean to repudiate when you're playing blockchain consensus? Like in, in binary consensus, it's really clear to just say like, oh, my last estimate was one, my next estimate is zero, that's repudiation. But what does it mean when you're building a block DAG? Is it maybe that you're saying something differently than the last time? I mean, you're, you're saying uh, uh, this is not in the block, but last time you, you, you included this in the, in the block. Oh. So like, uh, that's what, this is why I'm thinking about last message. How, how can you find this uh, all from the last message? You, you, you must know some kind of history to conclude what is happening. You, you know, who, who sent the message to whom and you can conclude, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not sure how to, how to get this but only from the last message, so. Yeah, so, okay, so maybe, so like in Black Dag consensus, I guess you're, what you're estimating is not a zero or a one, but like a four choice tip, right? Or what are you estimating actually? Yeah, a four choice tip, I think, right? What was the question? Sorry, I'm what? thinking about in, this. In blockchain or in Black Dag consensus, what is the estimate? It's not a zero or a one or any of these other things. Is it just, is it the four choice tip? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's it. Uh, okay. I mean, I know that's how it is for blockchain consensus. I, I can't say I fully understand the block DAG consensus, how that works and how it's different from, from blockchain consensus. But, but I think you are choosing the, yeah, four choice tip is the ghost rule. Okay. And when you so, say four, so four choice tip, you're, 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 you're uh, um, uh, thinking about the hash that is valid for the previous block. Yeah, yeah. I guess you specify the four choice tip by saying like the block with this hash is my four choice tip. Mm, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, so then maybe repudiation means like if my current four choice tip, uh, if my previous four choice tip is not in the blockchain of my current four choice tip, then I've repudiated. So like it doesn't it doesn't count as repudiation just to grow the blockchain, right? I mean, of course I'm adding new blocks to the blockchain. That doesn't count as repudiation as long as like the thing I estimated before is still in the blockchain. But maybe repudiation is when like, oh, there's this whole other long part of the DAG that I'm just hearing about that has more weight according to Ghost. So like now I'm switching my fork choice tip over to here, and that means my old one's no longer in the blockchain. I guess maybe that is what counts as repudiation. Hmm. So I don't know what I don't know what Derek's diagram or, or case would look like in that example, but that could be fun to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Did you come up with anything interesting for three validators? Um <clears throat> I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's interesting yet, but uh here I can I can start drawing what I what I have so far. Uh, do you mind if I change this last uh, diagram? No, 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 no. That's what it's there for. Okay. I actually stopped sharing because I thought you were going to hold your whiteboard up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You, you sharing is fine, actually, because I'm just uh, messing with the Google Doc anyways. Yeah. Well, if Zoom would get out of the way, then I could actually edit it. All right, cool. So let's see. I think that I wanted to do... And Josh, uh, you're thinking about equivocation as equivocation. Is this the same or? Uh, repudiation or yeah. equivocation? Yeah, yeah. Is this the same or like a synonyms or? <laughs> oh, as equivocation? No, not That's synonyms. No, 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 not synonyms. So like. My thought was, I'm going to just look at this middle diagram for a second. So like equivocation is if I just delete one of those vertical lines. So like B3 has now made a block that doesn't, con or sorry, W1 has now made a block that doesn't contain a previous W1 block in its justification. So that's an equivocation. Whereas repudiation just meant like changing your mind, like switching from a one to a zero as the estimate or switching from this 
blockchain tip to this other blockchain tip. Mm, okay, okay. All right, I see. I see. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Some something along these lines is what I'm thinking. Let's see if this makes sense. So basically, I'm thinking like uh, validators, you know, zero and one are the first to go. Uh, they issue, you know, a zero and a one. Uh, and then uh, they kind of see each other's messages like this. So second, you know, B2 is issued and only oh. sees this one. So gets that estimate. Uh, B, uh, oops, this should be B3 here. So B3, B4, um, I think this would be B5. And then this one, B6. Yeah, so. Yeah, okay. I see what you're trying to do with these diagonals, right? So it's going to kind of cycle. Right, right. So I'm just, I'm not sure that the estimates work out the way I want them to yet, or if they even can, because like, okay, so B4 is the first interesting estimate, right? And uh, it sees B0 and B1, so equal weight on one and zero. So it's gonna come down to what are, what is our uh, rule for deciding between, you know, equally weighted estimates? Hmm. Yeah, but it's very sort of similar to, to the case with two validators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the hard part here was like you can't only have one one validator issue the original message because then everybody's just seeing everything. Trivial consensus. Yeah. 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 Right. We could probably make a pretty interesting case of trinary consensus with three validators. Uh oh, that's right. Maybe maybe that's what we should be doing here. So like. Well, I guess, but yeah, so zero, one, and two are possible here, right? So there's a zero and a one at first. This guy only sees the one, so it goes one. This well, one. you can give everybody an initial block if you switch it to trinary. Yeah, I, I guess that's true. Um, if you don't have an initial block of two, you're never going to get a two in here. Right. Or unless, there's, unless we come up with some. Oh, you know, maybe if all three of them went from the beginning, we could make this the way I want yeah. it. Yeah, all right. I was just thinking the wrong thing. Uh, let's see. <coughs> okay, so one, one, and zero. So this guy's going to go and see both of those blocks, probably. Uh, I don't know. How are we going to? I don't. I don't know if that's going to work out the way I want it to. But um, let's see. So we got to give this guy a new estimate, I think. So like. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Not binary, trinary. Okay, cool. So here we go. Uh, okay, right. So now, well, but here, but now this thing is exactly the same as the last diagram that I drew. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because we, we have, you know, n validators saying n different values and everybody sees everybody else basically um okay hold on hold well on. at least up to this block that's the case yeah okay can so, i mess with this for a sec yeah i should have asked before. okay no, no 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 go for it go for it um okay so so let's say like we maybe we need two rounds to get this of like setup before it starts looking interesting so yeah everybody okay. proposes an initial block with a different estimate right and then the second round everybody sees their neighbor to the right their block and their neighbor to the right's block let's just yeah. i'm just curious yeah so so that'll um it'll depend on how we resolve seeing different estimates with the same weight oh you're right in in round two that's gonna matter yeah so let's do them let's do them the keep your keep your same thing keep your same okay way in the case of ties keep your same thing all right, so this guy's neighbor to the right is all the way over here. Um, oops, 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 oops. I don't know. Uh, and so this should stay up. Oh, and this, that ah. should be zero, yeah. Oh, uh-oh. I think I did that. 
That was okay. weird. I was I was changing it to a zero, and then all of a sudden it just vanished. <laughs> I I thought you did it too. Somehow we interacted weird. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now that we've done that, though, like can something interesting actually happen here? Mm -hmm. So, well, yeah, yeah, of course. Everybody, yeah, so that's the rule. Everybody always sees their own thing and their neighbor, oh yeah, this is totally the same as the middle case, right? Yeah. If everybody always sees their own thing and their neighbor to the right, then I'm just, this W1, for example, this far right column is always gonna be seeing a bunch of zeros and oh yeah that didn't i didn't get anything interesting there that didn't work <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well but if if eat well no um i was gonna say if if each validator sees the you know all of the other ones estimates um maybe it's interesting but i don't think it is because uh then again it's it's still basically the same as that second diagram because now we're just deciding how do we est how do we uh, you know, choose an estimate given, you know, three estimates that are different, all with equal weight. Yeah, right. And you can't, you can't do something where you like only see the other two, because then you, you've equivocated. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how it would work in, uh, in the odd validator case. Yeah. All right. Well, that's okay. It's, it's 10 o'clock. Um, I wanted to get a sense of what you guys want to work on next week. I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. mind digging into Hashgraph or digging a little more into Casanova. I didn't feel like I fully understood all of the algorithms in that paper um, mm -hmm. or whatever else. Does anybody have any preferences? I, for I vote Hashgraph because I never really like heard of it slash did any research into it. So that'd be an interesting one for me personally. But also mm -hmm. okay. I wanted to bring up out of curiosity, um, What's, is everyone still cool with like the 9 a.m. time or would it be possible to push it back to 10? Because I know we did a question wars on um, just in Asia, but I don't know, just trying to get everyone's thoughts on possibly pushing it back towards 10. Is that suitable? If not, 9 is still fine. Yeah. I, I was thinking of that too because Drawer is the one that has to move, but I, I don't have a strong opinion either way. Yeah, I, I feel pretty similarly. I mean, I don't I don't mind meeting at nine, but if uh, it would be better to meet at ten for other people, then let's meet at ten. Yeah, because like, what time is it for you, Thomas Love? It's it's evening right oh, it's, now, right? It, yeah, no, it's it's like a late uh, of the day, five o'clock. Yeah. Four o'clock. Okay. So it's not problem for so We started at four o'clock today. Oh uh, no, three, three o'clock. We started at three o'clock. So it's four o'clock yeah. now. Oh, yeah, okay. so so ten would be five for him, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's, okay. not, it's not normal for me. So. Ten would be four. Yeah. Thoughts, okay. Jim? I'm ambivalent. So I'm, Let's I'm, try ten o'clock next week. See how it goes. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, One hour later. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I like the idea of doing Hashgraph next week, and then uh, maybe more Casanova after that, and it'll it'll give us some time to like individually look into the Casanova paper because I, I know I haven't yeah. had time to, to actually look into it on my own. Yeah, and I know I do better well, when we have something planned in advance so that I come prepared. Oh, yeah, definitely. You're not like, well, are we are we meeting or are we just like, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 All right, so let's, let's all do our whatever we consider the appropriate amount of preparation to talk about Hashgraph next time. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, okay, I, I, can you like read like Yeah, if someone could send the links, that would be great in the Discord. I, I popped one into into Discord. I'll pop a few more in the next, I don't know, couple hours or so. <laughs> Is <laughs> anybody thinking about um, uh, reconciliation? Block reconciliation? Uh, what do you mean? Um... Where uh, uh, in essence, uh, two proposed two proposed blocks are combined into uh, one uh, block, where you have cooperation among the nodes about proposing blocks. Oh, interesting. And when, when you say combined, yeah. what do you exactly mean combined? Yeah. 
is this like a like a, a fork and, and join or or you somehow use well, the date about the working? Basically, uh, uh, I'm about to propose a block, and well, if, uh, I mean it's not easy. You know, uh, in, in real systems, there's negotiation on proposals. And I guess let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, let's spend some time thinking about it and, and talk through a, a scenario next time. Yeah. Th then, uh, Jim, that'll give you some time to think of a, a good definition for us and stuff. Yeah, you're talking about like a, like a local ghost or something where you're uh, doing like localized consensus and proposing like bigger blocks to like the larger network or something. Oh, that's an interesting idea. I don't know. Is that totally stupid or does that make sense? No, at it, first it, it's it, like a really it's almost like a lightning network within the R chain network, you know, the, the valid, the validators within the consensus network are themselves smaller consensus networks. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, is that how, um, <laughs> Is that how sharding works? I mean, that's Maybe. basically sharding, right? Sounds like how sharding should work. Yeah. We should definitely talk about that more. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, Good idea, uh, Jim. Yeah, the, you know, yeah. that's uh, the idea. Is, you know, and the, I mean, the practical application is uh, cross chain uh, uh, coordination. You mean for yeah. like interoperability? Yeah, uh, totally. Right, like two two different blockchains that can work together. Oh, right. I've been thinking a lot for about exchange that. data. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, from the point of view of uh, the safe way to connect these systems is uh, uh, having remote channels. Okay, so, um, uh, so uh, shard A can have remote channels on any other shard. Mm -hmm. And then you have, uh, it could be an oracle. I mean, you could write an app that listens uh, uh, for a channel on one shard and sends on a channel on the other side. Shot, shot. Yeah, so Jim, are you, you're, you're starting to think of the, the sort of like general scenario where like, you know, maybe you and I are both interested in being in a blockchain, but we happen to not have very much like business in common together. So we're in separate blockchains, but like every once in a while, we want to conduct a little bit of business, you know, you mm -hmm. with me, even though we mostly don't interact with each other, then like there's some, you know, reasonable way to do that. Is that what you're thinking of? Like connect our two yeah. blockchains so that I can send you some money even though we rarely interact? Right, uh, I mean, I, 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 I may be on the Tampa Bay shard. Yeah. It may be on... Uh, We're up here on the Cleveland shard. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, you know, I could have a, uh, a remote uh, reference to your inbox. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. What was the word you used for it? At the very at the very beginning, it started with R, I think maybe. Remote. No, no, well, five minutes ago. Reconciliation. Yeah, re yeah, reconciliation. Yeah. Reconciliation. You know, I've been thinking about that in a couple of ways. Uh, uh, one is that uh, uh, essentially what we, you know we're proposing all this stuff in par, so we don't care what order it's in. Okay. And you know, a simple reconciliation is we uh, we uh, cooperate with another, sh or we we cooperate with another shard. We say, in the sense that uh, uh, these are these are the orderings that matter. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, uh, we're not uh, we're not really proposing a block so much as we're saying 
blocks on your shard should obey this. Oh. We need, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we're imposing an ordering or a partial ordering between blocks from different shards. So like, mm. it's necessary that this block in the Cleveland shard happened before this block in the Tampa shard in order for this payment to go through. And it's going to take some coordination between the two groups to make that happen. Oh, that makes sense. Right. And I, I think the, the remote references give you uh, a first approximation of uh, 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 what orderings are important, right? <laughs> what we care, yeah. what we care about. Okay. Well, uh, enough on that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I do hope we make a Tampa Bay shard, and yeah, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I am you know supporting remote channels is trivial. I mean, we can have a little program that you know listens on one ch shard, uh, you know, a proxy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, this is really. There's a lot of interesting ideas floating around now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, you must cool. have two remote channels to, to say to one shot, I give you this and I expect some expecting some messages later that you confirm yeah. that I can continue and in a sense this is like similar to what uh, what is Greg uh, in Greg's uh, paper about identity right? oh. oh maybe I didn't yeah. I don't think I've encountered that I mean you, you you're expecting something in return and then I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. All right, cool. Oh, we did not record today. Yeah, yeah. It looks like we did. Oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, yeah. we did. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Tim. I'm so happy I'm <laughs> That's All why right. we put that uh, in the hands of someone. Wow, responding. this actually like kicked off a lot of <laughs> ideas that I now have. Huh. I'm just going to jot them all down and just share it in a collab. That's a great idea. Yeah, I love that. All right, gang. So, so let's meet next week. And then I don't know. I mean, anyone's welcome to stay. I, I don't know. It, typically, it's been Isaac and Thomas. Do you guys want to do some Roxy stuff or Haskell stuff or however? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. Cool. And if you guys want to see the the K framework stuff I've been working on too, I'd I'd love to show you that. Totally, totally. Yeah. Cool. Right. Jim, yeah, do you I, mind stopping? It? Please uh, send anybody who wants to. Uh, uh, Beep up on their rolling scales, uh, send them my way. Uh, we just had Gary participating in the uh, development of directories. Now, uh, after watching uh, Kyle's presentation uh, from uh, DEF CON 3, I've changed my ideas on objects and agents in rolling quite a bit, or they're evolving. But um, uh, I sure would like it if we, uh, if, you know, if uh, some people who are interested would participate in, you know, providing the community services with voting for the community, uh, the collab community initially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Cool. If we, you know, a directory uh, of admins, and you know, about to do one for members. Um, in what are you talking about? Like in Rolang somewhere? Yeah, it's in uh, 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 it's in uh, Robot. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also looking at uh, using Robot in conjunction with a uh, voting app on an Android that uh, Stephen Taylor King has an Android resource, so it can it can it can send messages to Robot. Uh, for to demonstrate voting. All right. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, everything's evolving. Uh, you know, developing our uh, uh, decentralized uh, identifier, our our DID directory uh, of collab public names and personal names um, where everything has an object ID it could have a DID document uh, for self-sovereign identity um, uh, no it's a, you know we're building uh, 
prototypes and you know, using toy keys and things so far. But um, we, you know, uh, we're capitalizing on this core identity to do actual community applications. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, you have commands where you do an eval colon, and then you can say dollar vote, and you give it two arguments: uh, the the ballot and the ballot name and the vote. Um, uh, we're also looking at uh, adding, you know, uh, right now you can define macros like that. Um, uh, we're also looking at uh, being able to de define commands. So you can do vote colons <laughs> and make it, uh, uh, the, make the user interface uh, mm -hmm. reasonable for members to use it to promote voting and our chain Europe uh, uh, looks like you'll be doing some experimenting with that if we ever get it running. Uh, right, right now, I'm pretty much the only. Me and Gary are the only ones working on it, really. Mm -hmm. so we want to send people our way if they're if they're interested in doing something for the community, learning some Rolang, a little JavaScript, perhaps. Uh, Jim, I, I was happy to send Quack your way the other day. Oh, he was yeah. asking our chain questions and didn't know if he wanted to pay the twenty dollars to join Discord. And I said, "Hey, man, join CoLab." He, he showed up at a at, at a meeting, but he he didn't speak or type. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right, guys, you want to you want to do some? Should we start with K framework? Yeah, sure. I would love to actually get some. Um, K frames. Oh, hold on. Actually, that's not you, Isaac. That was Jeremy. I didn't. Oh, that okay, okay. You okay? Yeah, because like my Wi-Fi cuts out at the most random times, and I'm surprised <laughs> it's even supported an hour of video so far. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is pretty impressive. Jeremy, were you saying you wanted to see some K framework stuff? Well, I do at least. Sorry, you guys hear me now? Yeah, 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 we got you. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I like, I <laughs> this is like yeah. comedy hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would love to learn um, some K friends. I've never actually seen it in action before, so this would be kind of cool. Cool. Dude, Isaac, you're muted. <laughs> Oh, here we go. All right, now I'm not muted. Um, yeah, you'll have to apologize, or uh, you'll have to excuse all my warning messages here. Hold on a second. Am I still in this call? I am, right? Okay, good. Uh, let's yeah, see. What am I looking for? Uh, oh, yeah, Joshi, I, I just got to say, this uh, rolling cheat sheet's been really, really helpful. Oh, for me also. Yeah, super, super helpful. Yep. Um, but I actually, I actually have like a really basic question before, before I even do any uh, K framework stuff. So when we're, when we're talking about patterns and processes, uh, I want to distinguish between um, like a concrete process and a pattern. And I thought I knew what that meant. And then I realized that I didn't know what it means because uh, we want processes to be uh, accepting or listening for things to pattern match on, right? So like uh, in this this uh, receive process, I am listening on the channel Chan for some name pattern Y that I'm going to substitute into P, right? So I'm kind of expecting this continuation to have some, you know, a name pattern in it, right? Because like you're, you're muted, Joshi. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, right, we'll, we'll help yeah. each other out that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when you do a receive, like for Y from Chan P, um, yeah. Y itself should be a pattern there. Yeah, yeah, in, exactly. In, in a name pattern specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And then mm -hmm. something comes in on Chan, 
And then if and only if the thing that came in on Chan matches the pattern Y, yeah. the, the thing that came in on Chan should be concrete, a concrete process. The and thing that comes in should be a concrete process. Right. Yeah. So that, okay. that four that we're both looking at is going to be common with something that looks like one of the first two lines. Like, let's so, just say the first So here, here's my question, really. Uh, this, this continuation P, uh, yeah. it, it's going to have some name pattern present in it such that when I substitute a concrete name, pa uh, a concrete name for this name pattern Y, this, mm -hmm. this process will now be a concrete process. That's right. Yes, yeah. that's exactly okay. Okay. Right. That, that's my current understanding of it. Because at first I was just like, well, if a receive anywhere contains a pattern, like even this, even this Y being a name pattern, then it's a pattern. But that's not true because this is a, this is a true receive, right? That's a receive. That's right. That's yeah. a, even, even if Y is a pattern, which in general it is, yeah. That four, the whole thing is still a concrete process. Right. And, and so now the confusing part, like with this, with this, oh, I don't know why it won't select this, but it will select everything else. But either way, uh, this like <laughs> why this, this channel binding with why, right? Like that, uh, that why being a pattern, that's totally fine. Uh, but the distinction between this continuation being a concrete process or a process pattern is, is kind of a big deal. And, uh, I'm going to have to figure out a good way to like, I, I don't know, like capture so that. Idea, I, guess. More than, I think there's another concept here. There's, yeah. so there's patterns definitely, which it sounds like you've got a totally good handle on. Yeah. But then with, with P with that continuation, it should never be a pattern, right? We're not going to, we're not going to pattern match. We're not ever going to say like, does some concrete process match this continuation P? But the distinction we need to know with P is it's not a pattern, but that doesn't narrow it down to one thing. It's either a, a concrete process or a process that still has some holes in it. Or some, I should say some free names in it. Oh, so you're, you're making even a distinction between like um, pattern or process patterns, process contexts, and the concrete processes? That's yeah, a, I think so. I'm trying that on for, for size right now, I guess, yeah. because here's my thought. When, when some message gets sent on Chan, you're gonna run this sub algorithm that, that says like, does the thing actually match the pattern Y? Yeah. And if it does, what you're gonna get back is not necessarily just yes or no. What you're gonna get back is either no, it doesn't match, or yes, and here's a whole bunch of bindings that happened when it matched. Yeah. And then all those bindings you get, those are gonna be substituted into a, a process that in general still has some, some free names in it, P, to make it a concrete process. Yeah, that will no longer have free names once we do that substitution for all the bindings, right? Or so, yeah, exactly. And this, once you substitute all those zero or more bindings that you get back from pattern matching against Y. Yeah, and yeah, all of that totally makes sense. Okay, okay, cool, uh, good. So, so that's exactly what I thought it was. So I'm, I'm really happy that I'm thinking the right way. Um, yeah, okay. nice dude. I'm, I'm getting close to being ready to try to implement something crazy like that too. So I'm glad we talked through it. Cool, man. Cool. So you're saying that you're saying concrete process is uh, without uh, without free names. Without yeah. free names. That's without right. free names. Yeah. 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 And, and oh, so, yeah. Go ahead, Joshi. Well, I was going to say we could probably write a an algorithm that like takes in a process and tells you is it concrete. It tells you that either it's concrete or no, it's not. And here's all the free name. Oh, you were well, talking about doing that, right? Well, I was going to say, in fact, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So, so yeah. And, and to do that, I need to understand like, what is a concrete process? And so that, that comes down to like, when I see uh, a receive process like this, am I allowed to put any type of process pattern in this uh, continuation context? And, and I am in the sense that, when I do that substitution of the bindings that I get from from this, you know, bind portion, when I plug those those names in, then I no longer have a, a pattern. It's the true process at that point. Well, but I th I think you should be careful calling it a pattern though, because a pattern could be something that has like underscores in it or something, and you're never going to have something like that in a continuation. The only thing you'll ever have is free names. That that's a really good point. Yeah. So I I know that um, the wildcard syntax was in the the 
uh, rolling syntax and K framework, but I was looking for it yesterday and couldn't find it, which I thought was really weird. I didn't, I didn't go back to like GitHub or anything, but the, the version that I have doesn't have it somehow. Um, yeah, we had seen it at some point in, um, Mr. I think Mr. Chico's repository had that in there, maybe. Okay, that that might be the reason why. I think I was looking at Derek's repository. Um, yeah, actually, let me write that down so I don't forget about it. Yeah, oh, but also, I, I don't know that for sure. I could be wrong about that. Do you have a link to this repository? Let me see if I can find it. I'm not sure that I've seen it. Because I'm, I'm having very the, the, the similar question for, for my implementation. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't have time to like finish uh, the, the substitution completely, but uh, I, I posted the link in this group. <laughs> I saw the link. I started to look at it. Just if I want you to call. Yeah. Um, OK, I think I got the link. Mr. Chico slash k -Row. where should this go? Yeah, that, that's it. I don't know why I'm having issues finding it right now, but whatever. Uh, yeah. I got it by, uh, Derek forked it. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay here's, the, here's the link coming in Discord. Okay. Uh, shoot, man, where, where should I, where, where do you guys want to see of what I've done? I guess I've done a lot since the last time we talked about this stuff. Uh, let me. That's how I feel too. Yeah. So, <laughs> I didn't have anything well, to show last week and then dude, this week one, I went One major, major accomplishment is I literally read through all of the included files to look at like the case syntax and the entire reference manual. So I've read through all of the information that exists about K framework at this point, basically, yeah, you, uh, which is really best nice. Because, for docs is your brain, dude. Yeah, dude. Now, <laughs> now I can work with like uh, the actual case syntactic category and make it do like all sorts of stuff for me, which is really great. Um, oh, nice. But uh, but one. Uh, okay, so hold on a second here. Uh, so what I've been working on is this, uh, this grounded, uh, row calculus. So basically I took, here, I'll open it and show you. So I took, uh, row calculus and basically added, you know, Booleans, integers and strings as like ground processes and then tried to, to build from there. Uh, this. Okay. 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 Hold on. I want to, I want to dig in a little bit already. So you've got processes and then, yeah. uh, there's all the same stuff we normally expect. Like, first of all, it can have braces around it. It's got send and dequote and all that normal stuff. But yep. you've added this new one. You've added two new ones for ground and expression, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so the ground are just the, you know, simple, like it's an int, it's a bool, it's a string. Uh, yeah. The expressions can take in, in spool strings and actually uh, these unquotes and do operations with them. And so like, for example, we can have arithmetic type expressions. Uh, so like in int would be an example of an arithmetic expression. Uh, we could have, you know, int plus int. Uh, we could also have this reify stuff like, um, you know, unquotes uh, appearing here. And basically that's, that's important um, because like in receives and stuff, I actually have like a little comment here uh, the reason that I did this is because it makes uh, things like this receive interesting. I don't think I changed this syntax yet, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, I have weird. Uh, so I'm curious about syntax. that too. I'm what? curious about putting re reify in your expressions like that because clearly it's some some version of that has to happen so that you can do star y plus five. Yeah. But it feels a little bit like type unsafe because not every d quote is going to be you know, I could, I could unquote like at nil or something, and then that's not going to work when I add it to five. That, yeah, that's something well, that I was struggling with too. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, you know, now I haven't, I haven't done anything uh, that would be type unsafe, but so like K is really nice because it doesn't care what type anything is. If you tell it to do a computation, it tries to do it. And uh, so it would, it would just get stuck. Oh, actually we could probably just do that and I can show you how it gets stuck. Uh, so like try to do a, well, try to do a com 
with something yeah. here where I send like, you know, Y is like at nil or something, right? Yeah, so yeah. Let me do one check just to make sure. Yeah, okay, I make uh, unquote and quote just inverse processes. So that should work. Um, oh, and really quickly, this anywhere uh, attribute is really nice. That. This is really nice for rules because it basically takes a context and just like, you know, applies this rule no matter where it's occurring, if it's in a K cell or any other cell. Uh, anytime I see a star at, it automatically just turns that into the underlying process. Um, so, uh, okay, great. I'm in the right one. Let me just compile it and make sure it's still working because I was changing it and I don't remember if I actually resolved all of the issues that I brought up, but let's, let's see, moment of truth. Well, for me, it's interesting that uh, you put this, uh, uh, this, uh, like a predefined process as, as a ground process to, to like to process structure, because I, I was doing the opposite. I was I was uh, putting them in in the names, and I had problems uh, because of that. Oh oh, putting putting the the ground processes as names. Yeah, as a, like a special name. As a special name. Yeah, but uh, this ma this makes more sense to me to to put it in the process and not in the in the name. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it makes sense to me in the sense that uh, what everybody says is that all of the data types are processes in uh, in Rolang. Yeah, but in I, I, have, Rolang, I that's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, in, in, Josh, what, what are you saying? In in, in uh, the co-op's Rolang interpreter, all data is process. Oh. Ints and strings and byte arrays and everything are all processes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, I was thinking how how they are de defined in 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 the uh, in the calculus. Is there a part of creation from names or just? I mean, do do you, how can do you create a, a name or a process from outside? Because we have unforgeable name. This is like a created name. Not, it, it's yeah. Not oh yeah, Rick talked about that so, in his uh, introduction to computational calculi course. Did you watch those or attend those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did this whole thing about like, we know that the names of the row calculus are countably infinite, right? Um, and so we can inject other finitely, uh, other countably infinite sets of names in there without losing generality. So like, um, imagine we have the set of all row calc names and we have that set written out in a column and then we have the same exact set written out in another column I can come up with a mapping where I map every item in the first list into like to like every other item in the second list. And so we, we say like, when I want this actual row calc name from the left column, I'm actually going to use this different row calc name from the right column. And that left us with a bunch of unused names. And so all those unused ones, those can be mapped to, um, you know, our integers and our unforgeable names and our Booleans and, and things like that. Yeah, and even like more complicated data structures, right? Yeah, exactly. Arbitrary ground terms. Yeah. Yeah, and this is why it makes more sense because yeah, you're you're you first create a process, then then you create a name, right? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. All the processes start with nil. Well, and you know yeah. any any ground processes that you inject into the the model. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I was when I was thinking about adding integers in in the Roxy, I was like, oh, dude, those they should all just be ground terms, right? Like there's one single production called ground term and then it can optionally be tagged with like some other primitive data or something that we can then do expressions on. Yeah. Oh, well, I must try uh, with, with the ground terms in the, in the process, definitely, yeah. <laughs> well, so Thomas, while well, Isaac is typing this up, I, I shared an idea with him the other night that I should share with you too. I'm not sure the concept of names is even necessary at all. Because the, the big key idea of like uh, row calc from PyCalc, or one of them at least, is there's no, don't presuppose any names, right? All of the names are just quotes of the processes. And that's a cool idea. And then I was like, well, why do we need that word quotes? Like, why don't we just say all of the names are the processes? So like if I want to send a message, instead of taking some process, quoting it, so it can be used as a channel and then sending it on that quoted thing. Why can't I just say like, oh, I'm gonna send it on this particular process. 
So that's actually how I coded up uh, Roxy, and I'm yeah. I'm not sure the names are necessary ever. Oh, so you're yeah, are you convinced fun. that you don't need names whatsoever? I'm convinced in the sense of it makes sense right now and it hasn't been a problem so far. I'm not convinced in the like I proved it sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um but but in the in the sense of like it's a fine computational model uh without the name. Hundred percent agree. I mean, like I even sent you the the syntax, and we could we could look at yeah. what I did and, and pay for yeah, that too, if you want. Um, yeah. yeah. So like, uh, definitely, it's it's a sound computational calculus. It does it have all of the same expressiveness as the row calculus? I have no idea. Um, yeah, you know? that's right. That's what I don't know either. I'm gonna Wait, I'm gonna my sort of quick question. Not to... I'm gonna carry on with that for now, and we'll see. Yeah, what do you think of Jeremy? Oh, um, I, I heard you say like Roxy a couple of times. Can you describe that? Like what is um, oh, Roxy? Oh, sure. Doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's, uh, I'm proud of it, but it's just a little tiny thing right now. It's like my attempt to write a row line cal um, interpreter. Oh, nice. It lives, yeah. Uh, Isaac's got the share right now. It, it lives in my GitHub, so you can, yeah. you can find it there if you want to. And again, you know, like I'm really proud of it because I wrote it, but right now it's not anything like super impressive. So, don't get too excited, but yeah, it's kind of cool. So this is trying to parse one where you like try yeah. to add nil and five. Dude, like I like I said, I uh, I was changing a bunch of stuff in this definition, and I don't know what's working and what's not currently. And it seems like uh, more is not working. <laughs> uh, yeah, usually, that yeah. Give me, give me like yeah, that's two really minutes good. though. Because I think yeah, I can yeah. get this working fairly quickly. The the problem is it's only accepting names as uh you know the the pattern it's listening for, but names are only quoted processes or bracketed names. So it's like I'm trying to put a variable in there and it won't let me do that. Uh, but I think that's all that was stopping me from doing. Oh, you know what? Okay, never mind. I'm just gonna make uh I'm just gonna make variables names and then I think we should be. All good. Uh, you're saying that uh, you want to have holes, right? You, if you want to pattern to, to more than one like variable. Yeah. Uh, so so I'm saying that um that I want to be able to put like a variable in for what this is listening for. So this is like for y from at nil, right? Like I have a slightly weird syntax here because I was doing it more in the style of like pi calculus. Um, but uh, th this should work now. So let me let me recompile and uh, see. We'll probably get a thousand errors. Yeah, this I got to get rid of this warning stuff. This is really silly. It, I think I need to change something with juice, but I don't really know. It's juice. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm not familiar with the juice. Me either. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's see what I got here. Uh, not what I wanted because it looks confused. Well, either way, you can see kind of what's happening here. So, uh, so I put, in, I put in this program, right? So I told it to do a send. Is that screen big enough? I don't actually know how to make it. It's, it's, it's okay. It's a yeah, yeah. I see it fine. Yeah, uh, yeah so sending, sending uh, the process nil on the channel at nil, uh, listening for some pattern, which I call Y on at nil, and then I'm gonna reify that name pattern Y and try to add it to five. Uh, the issue here is I'm, I'm sending something that's not an integer and then I'm trying to add five to it. So, so it shouldn't do what I, you know, um, it shouldn't do a whole lot, uh, but certainly it should come because we're, we have the same receive and the same send channel. Uh, so I'm not sure why it's not coming currently, but like I said, I changed a bunch about this and I don't remember what's been changed and not at this point. That's okay. Let's, let's look at this anyway, because we can learn about your implementation. So you've got a thread pool and a tuple space, right? That's right. Yeah. Two, two, so yeah, there's one big outside cell. That's this top cell. And that's basically just to ensure everything is always happening within a cell. And it's always happening within this top cell. Uh, but within the top cell, there's the two main cells, which is the thread pool cell and the tuple space cell. And these are color coded, which is, which is nice. It's easier to see. And um, so, yeah, so within the thread pool cell, there can be as many thread cells as I want, zero, zero or more, basically. And 
I know there's one there because, well, I'm, I'm looking at it, right? It's, it's basically saying like, I want to do some sort of computation with this, this send of the process nil on the channel at nil. Um, and so, okay, in my tuple space, uh, it didn't process this send for some particular reason. So it didn't go down to the send cell, but that's ultimately where it would have ended up. It would have, uh, so if this had worked correctly, this should have dissolved from the thread pool completely. There should be no threads up here. So it should say something like dot thread cell bag or something along those lines. And uh, there, this sends cell should have a send cell within it, just like the receives has a receive cell in it, uh, containing this basically, just saying that this is the, the channel I'm sending on and this is the, the thing that's being sent basically, right? Um, yeah. I, I, Dude, this I'm is not completely. Uh, I'm not, oh, I'm not, sorry, go ahead. I don't understand uh, the, the thread pool part. Uh, I don't see uh, the receive. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Why, why is that? So, what the thread pool does is it basically scans the whole term for pars. If there are any top level par constructors, it's going to take each of those pieces of the par and put it into its own thread cell. So the, the first thing that happened was it looked at the term, uh, you know, this par this and was basically like par is the top uh, term constructor. So I'm going to just take that first thing, throw it into a, a thread cell and take the second thing and throw it into a, a thread cell. But then it says, oh, I see this. Well, what it's supposed to say is, oh, I see there's a send in, uh, in a thread. So I'm going to take that send, generate a, a send cell that contains all of that same information, get rid of that, that thread that contained the send. Uh, that didn't happen. That's why I still had that, that send in the K cell. Uh, but the receive did happen correctly. And so this is what happens when, when it identifies there's a receive in a thread, is it generates this receive cell that contains the, the channel that I'm listening on the pattern that I'm listening for, and then the continuation. Oh, so, okay. Okay, I understand. So, okay. yeah, so, so that's currently what's happening here. And like I said, I, it's, it's a bug currently that this is not also generating a send cell here. I'm not sure why that's happening, but. Well, you so have lots of implementations where that works correctly, right? Yeah, like there's yeah, some exactly. little thing that you can debug in real time. Right, right, exactly. Um, yeah. So uh, this is, well, uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit unfortunate because the whole point was I wanted to show you what happens when we, when we put the <laughs> yeah. here, right? So give me like maybe two seconds uh, and I'll look over this because there's just something a little bit weird happening. Uh, oh, wait. Nope, never mind. Do you want to let Tomislav show his code and then we'll return to this one? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, here, I'll stop sharing. I'd really like to see your, what you've done with for row lag. Yeah, unfortunately, that's not even the stuff that I've done recently, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, dang, okay. Oh, I see why it's so stupid. <laughs> oh, cool. I mean, pop it back up if you're ready. All right. Yeah. Let me let me compile it and make sure. For some reason, I was only uh, working with sending ground processes. I have no idea why. Um, but either way, if I had put a string there instead of nil, it should have worked. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to see if that is true and then go from there. Uh, so instead of oh, instead of sending nil, I want to send the string. I'll send the string nil. <laughs> All right, there we go. Like that should make any difference. All right, uh, here we go. Let me let me share real quick. Okay, uh, let's try this again. I just changed that that document. Okay, so here's one one type of thing that it does, uh, and it'll basically say like, "Hey, you're asking me to do this substitution. But I'm not really sure what you're talking about." 
And so, dang it, I didn't run the, I didn't compile it. Uh, this is going poorly. Uh, let's see, what was the issue there? This is like a, a, a type checker, right? Yeah, yeah, it didn't, it didn't like the way I was telling it to uh, uh, do, I think maybe I need to change that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't like the substitution I was telling it to do basically. Oh boy, but I think once I compile it, then I don't have to change that to a string, but it's okay. Uh, if it doesn't run on this one, then I'll abandon mm -hmm. this for right now. Okay, it did. Okay, so here's uh, here's what it did basically. So so we saw we saw how what it did before when it didn't process that send. And like I said, the really stupid thing that I did was I basically told it only process the send in a thread cell and, and put it in a send cell if this process I'm sending is a ground process. And it's a totally stupid thing. I have no idea why I had it written like that, but that's how it was written. So that's why yeah. I wasn't working before. Uh, but now, okay, and so you see, you know, kind of took this, this thing into the thread cell and didn't send it here uh, and had the receive here, yada, yada, whatever. Uh, you see here, there are, there's nothing in the send cells. There's nothing in the receive cells because it worked properly. Uh, and it's, it yeah, and it calmed, yeah. right? So everything is gone from the tuple space. Tuple space is totally empty. Uh, and what happened is when it calmed, it had that string nil and it placed it in that context where it was adding it to five. But now it doesn't know what to do with it. So it just. There's no reduction rule for string plus int. Yeah. So it's just. But check it out. It doesn't care. It did it anyways. Yeah. But it, it just doesn't know what to do with it. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you because you, there's no further rules for like what to do with it, right? That, that's but right. That's yeah. We kind of we ground yeah. it out in terms of our reduction rules. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool because like, uh, so instead of, instead of sending nil there, if I indeed sent an integer, right. Uh, so I want to have this be an integer instead, maybe like, you know, one or something and then do this. I have, uh, you know, addition reduction rule. So it should actually do the addition and it comes out with six here. Oh, nice. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Oh, well, that that's one very small thing. I don't know. Do you are you guys interested? Should I show more? Or do you do you want to show your your stuff? Or uh, I mean, it's already 1046. Right? Yeah, whether you chose more depends on how long you guys want to kick around and do this. I've learned a ton already. And I know I will from Tomislav too. Yeah, and I haven't if, even if said hang for a while. I'd love to see more. I haven't even said anything about today. structural types yet. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, will, I, I will definitely want to, to see more, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay cool. All right, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more. I, I, I have a question. I have a question about yeah. this uh, plus. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, is this uh, like a, the, 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 the logic part of uh, what, what Greg was telling us? Uh, wait, what do, you, what do you mean? Uh, I mean, uh, it, now you're 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 implementing plus uh, with the uh, two uh, with the two processes. Yeah, uh, you really are specifying uh, a semantic rule, uh, yeah. or or this or this like a special logic operation. You can say this is like an and or or, or this can be plus. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm thinking about this because I I want I want to uh, the, the next thing I want to implement is uh, like a holes and, and this logic stuff. And yeah, I'm thinking about this plus like in, in the same way. So, so, um, so this, this plus is a, a much more general operator than like integer addition because it accepts any types that fall into this category of arithmetic expression, which I can extend any way I want really, as long as it's consistent with all the sorts that I have defined here. Um, uh, but so like, for example, I'm necessarily defining uh, this plus for, you know, uh, I can have two reify processes that I'm adding together. But what does that mean? Well, uh, I don't really know because the only semantic rules that I have for plus are for integers. Uh, I, I was doing one for sets, but I don't think I implemented it correctly. Uh, and for what string. What is that going to be? Like union? 
Seven yeah, union. yeah, yeah. So this, uh, yeah, they do uh, sets like uh, lists, basically. Um, they're just all contained. Oh, oh, I should show you this. Uh, I wrote, um, oh, dang it. I have so much that I could show you guys. So, so one thing I was doing before I started working on the structural types, is you can see it here, I was starting to work on this function fn, which uh, takes in a, a rolling process or a row count process or whatever and just tells me the set of free names in that row count process uh so this is something that uh you know greg and i think it's uh matthias or whatever they they do in that paper they have that free name uh, yeah 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 so i so i was doing i was doing that and here's kind of like the beginning of my implementation for that stuff and this is literally like verbatim copying those rules from the the paper which is nice that it works that easily um, I didn't get it working here, but I do have it working in a different uh, file that I believe is currently working. So names and variables. So this one will actually, uh, the only thing that I do here is I define the syntax. Uh, and then I just define all of these functions, which take me from processes to set. Uh, so I have, you know, a free name function, a free variables, a bound names, bound variables, receive names, blah, 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 blah. You name it, basically anything I could think of, I made a function for and, uh, you know, by, by generating some semantic rules that make sense for the, the function. Uh, and, and these functions can be useful for, for patterns also. Or so, so what I wanted to do with this function was uh, say something about processes being alpha equivalent because ultimately I want to, I want to figure out a way to um, capture the notion of structural equivalence, but there's no, there's no good way uh, other than the definition of structural equivalence, which is the, the least equivalence, you know, on processes that's basically uh, um, like extended from alpha equivalence. So I need I need some notion of alpha equivalence first before I can do that. At least that was my my thought process. Mm, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so uh, I have some examples here. I can show you what what this what these different functions do. Um, yeah, uh, can I ask you? <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have, you have bound names and bound variables. Yeah. And do you differentiate with? Uh, Process variables and uh, name variables. Yes. Um, so so uh, so in this particular implementation, I can import variables as names, uh, and um, let me see here. Here I don't have process variables, uh, but in different implementations, I do have process. But what, what do you think the, is the like the right way? Uh, well, so the way that I've been doing it is I'll define, so I'll have name variables and I'll have process variables and my name variables come in two flavors. One of them is like a pure name variable and one of them is like a quoted process variable. Okay. Yeah. That, that yeah. What's the, wait, wait, what was the first one? When you just uh, like type an A and you're like, like I just yeah. Made a channel. Yeah, like x x bang x bang y or something like okay. x is a name variable, y is a process variable. Uh, but I could also put like you know at x bang y, and that's still fine. But now x is a process variable. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it can be done with uh, only one, but then you must like forget what is the the source. You must uh, everything uh, uh, put in, the, in only one variable. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that it, it can be done. Yeah, and and I think honestly, right now I'm just being like overly cautious and trying to like uh, have almost too much granularity, so I can like really see what the issues are. That's that's kind of been uh, my goal. Um, oh yeah, so let me let me uh, try to run something in this. Uh, so let's see, I gotta go. Actually, I think it's just in here. It's like yeah, that one. Uh, K run. I don't know what I have. Uh, I, I don't actually know what any of these are, but free name complex. That sounds great. Let's do that one. Oh, shut up. Come on, man. Oh, I didn't do it right. That's why. It always knows best. <laughs> ah, crap. 
There we go. Dude, I don't know why that print screen button is where the delete button should be. Oh, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, okay, so let's see what we just ran. Well, either way, you can see the output, right? So, so basically, um, well, it looks like I took some complex expression and I wanted to generate the set of free names. And so it looks like at A, at whatever, and Y and Z, those are all the free names in this particular process. So maybe maybe we should actually look at the process. Uh, so this is here, here, this is free name complex. Okay, so here's the process that I'm actually looking at. So it's like some quoted send of nil on the channel X. Uh, this is the process I'm sending. All right, yeah, some, some junk basically. Um, yeah, so basically, no, so now according to those rules, oh, that doesn't come or reduce at all. You were just making sure you got all the right names. Yeah, I, I just want to just any any process whatsoever. I just want to generate the set of free names for it. So here's cool. here's I claim is the set of free names for that process. According yeah. to the, the rules in, in the paper. Um, nice. Yeah, but maybe maybe like free names is not what you want. You want to know like what are the, you know, free variables or something. And, and like I said, I'm making a distinction between variables and names. Uh, names are like a concrete thing and, and variables can, can be basically any name whatsoever. Um, so let's see if I have, yeah, so it looks like I did. Oh, this one, I just generate the set of variables that appear in this expression. So I mean, we could look at that one, I guess. Uh, so this one just generates something like this. And I think they were actually the same process. So Maybe this is something that I would change uh, in the future, but it looks like something like this, you know, is a, is a quoted uh, process pattern, right? So like I might want to include all of this as, you know, a, a process pattern or something. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, but either way. This, all I was doing was taking like literally the, uh, you know, the variable letters that I see. Like if I see a Y, I put it there. If I see a Z, I put it there. But something like at A is not a variable and something like at whatever the send is, is not a variable, or at least that's how I was interpreting it at the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I have, you know, tons of different functions that I'll compute all of this stuff for any, any given like row calc. Uh, process. Oh, but okay. Uh, do you guys have any questions about that, or should I show you the structural type stuff? I'm I'm, I'm not completely sure that I understand. Uh, at string a. Uh, yeah. How how this is, uh, is the free name? Uh, okay. So so like I said, a so free name in the sense of uh, the way it's defined in the row calculus paper where um, the only names that we had in the row calculus paper were uh, just quoted processes, right? So there, there, there were no like pure variables, right? They're just quoted processes and those are your names. But they, they define this notion of free name uh, and basically it comes down to, where was that? Yeah, free names come down to, uh, here, basically, if I have a receive, uh, then the free names, uh, so X is added to the set of free names, and Y is subtracted from the, the set of free names in the um, continuation. So like, if Y was a free name in the continuation, it is no longer considered a free name when I bind this, this Y to it. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Right. So that's that's the rule for a receive. Uh, for a send, we just add that. Uh, we just add the channel, and we also add any free names that were in the process. So here's the notation for set union. It's just like uh, you know concatenation mm -hmm. or you know whatever. 
Uh, and then for for par, it's just whatever the free names of each thing and the you know whatever the free names of each par and are, we just union those together. Uh, and for reify, it's just whatever that name is. Mm. Okay. Yeah. This makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. So, so then looking at this process and now using those rules and generating the the set of free names, we get, you know, that this one is a free name, of course, because it's uh, a send or, or sorry, a receive channel here, and that was in our definition. Uh, Z didn't appear in this expression. That's okay, but it also, uh, oh, it does appear. Wait a second. What am I calculating here? Am I calculating three names? Oh, Z is a free name here because it appears here and it's only subtracted from the free names of, of this guy, but it was never there anyway, so no no issue. Uh, but it is in the set because it, it appears here as a free name in the reify uh, process. And Y makes sense, it's a free name in this continuation. Uh, this at, you know, X bang nil makes sense because it's the channel name for this send. And can we say that, that Z, you have two, uh, two variables, Z, two free names. Yeah. They're like, um, it's almost like, uh, two fresh instances of this variable Z. Yeah. And in, in, in this context, the, this cannot be like a type check, right? Um, oh, what do, you, what do you mean by type check? I mean, if you if you take this bar, uh, it's it's not uh, uh, it's, it's not uh, 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 typing set that okay because z in one in one uh, uh, term is a, is a process in one term is is the name. So, uh, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yep. Yeah, so this, well, no, no, it's, it's, it's a name in, in both because this one, it's star Z. Uh, it, it is a name, but they have, they have literally no connection to one another because there's, uh, you know, there's no, there's no com that's going to share information between this, you know, the two instances of the variable. Yeah, 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 but you, you cannot, you, know, you cannot write a rolling term that is correct in this form. Um, oh, because, we, because you have two Zs that, that, are, that are must be the same. In, oh in yeah yeah sure 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 well i mean so so this is like uh well how yeah okay i i think i see what you're saying i i think i see what you're saying um but uh so so one thing that i wanted to see and the reason that i ran this was to make sure that my rules are working correctly because i know i should get a z from this reify and I know that I should have a z being subtracted but only from the the free names of the continuation so I just wanted to make sure there wasn't like a global subtraction of the name Z from my set. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I, I wanted to do some really weird stuff like this to, to make sure that I, I was getting the correct behavior from my, from my uh, free name function. Mm, okay. And, and this type checking, will, this will be in, in different stage, right? Yeah. This so, like, so this, oh, wow. this doesn't say, this doesn't say anything about types. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, only yeah, only different uh, qualities of names, I guess. Isaac, here's something tangential. Does uh, you've got a comment in that file you just showed us? Does uh, where are those being parsed and removed? Oh, somewhere in your K definition. Uh, wait, a comment where? Uh, it was on the first line. Yeah, oh, right there. This this stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um. So I'm I'm uh, not a hundred percent sure how the parsing works. We could uh, we could look through the the basic K module if you wanted to. They define all of the parser stuff there as well. It's a little hard to read. Um, but did you yeah, get to even yeah. tell it like a comment is something that starts with two slashes or yeah or what? yes um and also with the addition that you can do comments with like a slash and a star and that'll comment yeah. like everything on multiple lines so where did you where did you tell it that uh well so it knows that just from like the the basic k module that you implemented to, to okay. do anything basically 
Okay, okay. So so yeah. comments, those two styles of comments, the slash slash and the slash star just come with K. And even more, uh, there's like uh, LaTeX commands that come with it that you can, you know, comment out, but will display in like a LaTeX document. I haven't yeah, gotten right. that working correctly yet, but um, supposedly cool. that's there. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so uh structural types i didn't say anything about those yet you guys still want to see structural types i know it's late it's already after 11 but i don't know i mean um i i would like to see that okay cool cool uh yeah let's go here structural types and we'll first look at uh let's see maybe uh oh no never mind let me just show you some examples and then i can show you what's going on uh i was really happy about this because it got to like there were so many places. Uh, so this is work that I did the, the last two days, basically as like a, a sprint effort to like really get something cool working. And um, there were so many times when it wasn't working and I was like, come on, man, I think I know what I'm doing, but it's not happening. And uh, everything started working yesterday. And I was super happy about it. So let's see if everything nice. really works. Um, uh, let's see, test. What I have here. Um, so let's do something like a sentence pattern that contains a name variable and a process or something like that. Okay, so, um, oh, okay, this is compiling from an old uh, instance of the definition, but that's fine. Uh, so basically what, what this is doing, so you can actually try to infer from this what's happening. I think I might even send you this one, Joshi. Um, but, but basically what it's looking at is it's saying, uh, okay, so like this first thing here is some kind of descriptor of like the top level uh, constructor. So here it's telling me that it's a send, but even more than a send, it's telling me it's a send pattern. So I know that I'm either going to have like, you know, uh, a pattern for a name or a pattern for the process is basically what I've, what I've deemed to be a send pattern. Um, Can you show us the, the term? Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, yeah. Let's look at the term. So we did this one. Yeah. So it's literally just give me the type oh. of X bang nil uh, and it comes out like this. So it says x bang nil. Well, I see that x is a name variable. So this is a send pattern. Uh, so I'm going to type it as a send pattern with uh, the branches that come off are going to be one for the, the name variable that's there. It's a leaf. That's the end of like my binary tree. Uh, so no, no further uh, typing required for this branch. And then this branch is also done because I've ended at a, a basically a, a ground process, which is the, the stop process. Um, cool. Something a little cooler, maybe. Uh, I think this, we'll see what this does. Okay. Uh, let's look at this one first, not in this crazy format. Uh, that was this one, I believe. Okay, so with this one, uh, it looks like I'm taking, uh, I'm sending on a name or like a variable X, uh, the parred processes, which are like sending on the name X zero and listening on at nil for some pattern Z and then the continuation is one. Uh, but I'll put both of them up there. Uh, dang it, if I can make that small enough. And actually, I got to run to the bathroom real quick, but I'll let you guys look at that for a second. It's, it's difficult to parse this in, in one line. <laughs> Yeah, totally. What was the term? Oh, it's that term at the top. Yeah. I, I, I tried to find the nesting uh, for the four. And 
the, the one. So it looks like we're, it looks, I'm looking at the term up top and it looks like we're sending, the whole expression is one big send on X. And then the thing we're sending is a par. Yeah, it would be nice yeah. to have that uh, like multi-lines and indent it a little bit, right? Yeah. But the, the only nesting is, is this uh, uh, one. It's a grand term, right? Um, this is like the, the nesting, the, but uh, all well, the Well, there's more nesting in the four later on. Uh, what do you mean? But only... uh, I mean, are you looking at the, like how deeply nested are the angle, the square brackets in that case up? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that only only term in, in Roland, the only term is uh, that that have nesting is a four. Uh, well, well, I mean everything is nested within the send, right? Everything is in the the message of the send. But it, in a sense, uh, this is like 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 a, another scope. So I'm I'm not seeing this as a nested. So in 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 that sense, I I, I think nesting. Uh, so let's see, hold on a second here. So this is, oh wait, no, this is done for, that's, oh, that's a little, is that weird? Oh, wait. Um, and then you again have this uh, name variable. Oh, okay. I'm reading this wrong. Okay. So the way that it's reading it is uh, it's saying, okay, so send pattern, right? So top level constructor is a send and even more so I know it's a pattern. Uh, the name that it is being sent on is this one. It's a name variable uh, and that's where it stops for this branch at least. So second branch is done. I now just need to expand the third branch. So it's always like, um, so the, the way that it appears is always some string that is just like the name of the top level term constructor. And then what is in those branches? Well, it's like the, the types of the sub expressions basically. And uh, so here I have a sub expression that is just a name variable X. So that's the type of that and we're done. Uh, the other thing is this entire par expression so then the next type starts off with a par that's even a pattern and i'm saying it's a pattern because this send is a pattern uh so that's that's our second thing here but within this par uh one of the sub expressions is a send pattern because we're sending on this name x uh and that's not the whole thing it actually goes until here here, right? So this is like the left side of the par. So it says it's a send, that's a pattern. Uh, the name variable is the channel we're sending on X. And the other, the process that we're sending is zero and it happens to be an integer, which I don't need to type any further. And then the second part of the par expression is a receive that contains all of this stuff. So it contains uh, the bind that it contains is between uh, some quoted channel, which is just the nil process and uh, the name Z. So basically I'm listening on the channel quote nil uh, for the name variable Z and my continuation is just one. It's totally crazy to read from from the uh, from the actual tree, though. Uh, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. 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 It's a little bit hard, but um, but yeah, you you can you can see that the you can see the relationship there. There. I wonder if there's an easy way to get like a pretty printer for that three lines of output at the bottom. It would be easier to read if it were like indented to show what's inside of what. Oh. Yeah, and also can, can this be displayed uh, uh, in this uh, um, XML format? Oh yeah, that would be great. I mean, probably, I don't, I don't know how to do it. Um, but yeah, the XML would be nice. Yeah, yeah. something. Like, 
well, do either of you guys know how to do that? And maybe you can help me with it. Cause I would, I would love to do that. I've, I've been doing a lot of stuff sort of like similar to that. Once, once I saw this Google draw thing, I was like, Oh, I'm going to draw the configurations for, uh, you know, the, the row calc stuff that I have. So I, I can show you like, um, some, um, some, some diagrams yeah. I drew for the configuration. Uh, I thought that's that a good idea. Kind of it would be a good exercise to write. I, I might be able to write a program that parses that string of output and then pretty prints it. I don't think I'd be able to do it from within K framework though. Oh, okay. Okay. Which is not to say it can't be done. Oh, nice. Yeah. So here's, here's my row configuration. It's basically, you know, big, big top level T cell. Uh, it's got the thread pool with thread cells and K cells within uh, it's got the tuple space with the send cells that contain send cells that have send chan and, and message cells and a receives cell that contains multiple receive cells with these three properties. Yeah. And, and, uh, and these types are all in the same K cell. Uh, not, yeah. So, um, so you cannot short diff differently, right? Uh, so, so this is a really stupid way to do this. Um, because, well, okay, let me, let me back step that a little bit. It's not a really, I, I don't know if it's a really stupid way. I haven't decided if this way is smart or stupid. Um, but this is the only way that I could figure it out because I didn't know how to work with any of the built-in structures, uh, in K except for, uh, the, the, the multi-set structure basically. Uh, so this, this was allowing me to work with the multi-set structure. Um, but now at this point, I think I might be able to get around it, uh, but, but for me, it just made sense because like, um, so what is, what is a, a send channel? I mean, it's a name, right? Names are in the case syntactic categories. So like, okay, sure. I can put names here now because I made this a case cell. Like messages are processes, but processes are in the case syntactic category. So I can go ahead and just put any K item I want here. I'm only ever going to see uh, processes or maybe I even put quoted processes here. I don't remember, but it doesn't matter because both processes and names are, are, you know, uh, uh, K terms. Uh, and then same, same with all of this stuff here, like process name, name or name pattern or whatever, but they're all, they're all K terms anyways. So I can just toss them in themselves. Uh, but very specifically, I tell it uh, to originally parse, parse the original program and make sure that it has sort proc when, when it, when it parses it, like it can't, I can't give it a program that actually is just like a name or something like that. It'll, it'll throw an error. If I, if I tell this definition, like, Hey, here's, here's a valid, uh, you know, rocout program. And then I tell it, you know, at nil and it'll be like, wait a second, that didn't, that didn't, uh, you know, land in the, in the process sort. So this is not a proper valid program. You, you, you said process sort. Yeah. You, you like, is, is this like something that a uh, King framework has like a sort of, you know, or. Uh, so, so when I say sort, I mean, um, I mean like a non terminal in the BNF grammar. So when I say sort, I mean, uh, when I'm looking at something like this, I'm talking about like this syntactic category quote. Oh, um, this is like a data type. You, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, like, it's a data this, type. Exactly. This is different, different data type. This is like a yeah, perfect. Block and this is like a name. And yep, yep. You cannot mix these two ones. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. So they're, they're yeah, data so they're, type. And, and so like, you know, this name data type take, it can be like, uh, you know, it can be a quote data type. It can be like a bracketed name data type, or it can be this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Data, so think, right? one, one thing that, that I've been struggling with is switching into a Haskell mindset is that the way this is broken down here in K framework makes a ton of sense to me. Yeah. You can have these hierarchies, right. Of like, almost everything is a, is a proc, right? But one of the things that can be a proc is a ground term. Yeah. And then ground term is defined later and it can be a couple of different things. Yeah. And so that kind of hierarchy makes a ton of sense to me, but I'm, I'm struggling to know how to do that in, in Haskell where it would be like totally natural in, in Java. So that's one of the learning curves that I'm struggling with making yeah. that switch. Yeah, it's interesting because like I think K framework is almost more like object oriented because uh, you always have the case syntactic category, right? Like everything is is 
uh, a K term basically. And then you're, you can like, um, you can structure your K terms basically, and then tell it how to like do computations with these new like structured K terms. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know if that's more like uh, object oriented, but from what I've heard of, at least that sounds more object oriented. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. That's, I mean, that's more or less uh, what I have to show you guys. And then uh, the other, the other thing is like now, now with the structural uh, types, I think I should be able to um, develop a notion of alpha equivalence that like actually is meaningful because uh, the, the reason that I uh, realized that just computing like the set of free names and then making sure that I can do like some substitutions and everything works out uh, is no good is because I think I need some information about context when I'm doing those substitutions because like if I'm if I'm doing a substitution for a free name that's in like a send channel position uh, that's different than if I'm doing a substitution for a free name that's in like a receive channel position or in like the continuation of a receive or something like that uh, so I didn't know how I would handle that in like my my uh, you know my functions that just generated like sets of these free names there was no context associated with it uh, so I think I'll, I'll be able to, to actually do something meaningful at this point. Uh, are you going to implement this as, as Greg was explaining us in, in his lectures? Uh, like a, like a, another, another, uh, another sub language, like a, we have processes and names and now we have a context with, uh, with the holes, right? Oh yeah. So, uh, uh, a, a little bit of that is happening with the structural types um, because I'm keeping track of of the the process patterns and and I'm keeping track of them in such a way that they're basically just contacts. Um, but I'll have to see if there's a way that I can even do a further distinction between like uh, patterns, contexts, and like concrete you know processes and and vice versa with names as well. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if there's a further distinction that needs to be made, but but maybe there is. And MS, I said it correctly. You're saying that if you try to replace names uh, in a in a in a receive, you have two different positions for names, which are not the same. Yeah. Or can I can I say that? Can I say that uh, the the send the first position of name in the send is the same as the second position in the four. In, in the four, as we write it in, in Roland, or, or in, 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 your, in your syntax, it's the, the first. First in, in the send, the first in receive, they're the same, but the, the second in receive is not the same. You mean, uh, well, they're the same as in they're, they're both just like channels to receive or send messages. Or send, yeah. You, you can use the same, like the same function to replace variables for, for these two. Yeah. Is this? True. I'm thinking that this must be true because they are the same. Yeah. They're they're both uh, like a names that you are sending or receiving. Right. But the different one is this this receiving. Uh, this receiving part is a different uh, like a. I'm not sure. Well, that that one's actually getting bound to something in the continuation. So yeah, it's that one's fundamentally different. And it's not only. Uh, bound, if you have multiple variables, you have like a context with the holes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I still not implemented that and I, I'm not sure how to do it. So Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that, that's like right around where I'm, so, so like I said, my default has been like make as many distinctions as possible. So I'm considering like, you know, the channel position in a send and the channel position in a for as as different for now and if i find out that it makes more sense to just make them the same thing then i will just make them the same thing mm, okay yeah uh do you have uh, some time that i show you my haskell version oh yeah yeah definitely uh yeah i can i can stop sharing okay. i will i will be quick <laughs> all right cool yeah i thought i was going to be quick man i i didn't realize i was going to over an hour to to show you guys that stuff so Sorry about oh, the time. For me, it's okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, do you see my screen? Yeah. So I have uh, one implementation. Okay, I can make it bigger. Uh, with uh, with two flavors. <laughs> okay. And I can first show you uh, what can I do. Oh, let's come off. So the whole parser is, is a par parser. I call it per p par. So, and I can put some simple drawing. And I can send on this page. And I can send the process A. Mm -hmm. uh, so <clears throat> this is like a simple uh, substitution mm -hmm. for 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 uh, for this bound. But now I have only only one name for the bound. I cannot have like a oh, more complicated. So, so, so yeah, so that uh, that x zero is now like a concrete thing. It's no longer a variable. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, this x zero is a, is a bound name. That I created it as a, as a replacement for uh, for this uh, a. Okay. It's, it's, it's really the same uh, as uh, you doing it in the camp framework. Yeah. And so I can why are not all the A's getting, in, in, forget about the second example for a second, the simpler first one, why did that last A not get replaced with X0? Yeah, in, uh, in, it's, it's a bug. Oh, yeah. It's still not working you know, as expected. I can show you a different example yeah, that's yeah. also not working. So. For okay, example, so you want to say okay. an example of something that's not correctly working yet. Yeah. <laughs> so this this is unexpectedly working. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, that looks good. But uh, I, I don't d differentiate between uh, process and name variables. This is why I was why I was asking you about that. Well, because now I'm, I'm correct converting this to to quoted name, which is. Yeah. Not exactly the same, but if you do it in all places, you know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it just so happens that all of your instances of A in, in, in that example were name variables. Yeah, yeah. So what, then, if you did, what if you did like not, no star, you just did like A bang A, what would it, what would it do? Uh, it's doing it all the same, <laughs> which, oh. which is not correct, which is not correct. Interesting. <laughs> this is not finished, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right, right. And uh, I was using uh, the the structure that uh, uh, Jake is using on his Scala variable. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, I would love to look at this. Could you make it one size bigger? Sure. Is it better? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so he did import multi set. I was thinking about doing that too. That makes sense. Um, and so data process equals a process has inputs, outputs, drops, and height. So what is that all about? Uh, inputs are uh, just the, the sense, the, the um, force. But yeah. uh, he didn't mention the, the bound name, where, where is the pattern. Yeah, uh, right. Because this is like replaced and you don't need it. Because you can you can uh, calculate it from the term and you, you can replace it. Yeah. Wait wait wait. Okay, hold on. Slow slow down for one second. You yeah. So so fours. I always think they they are parametric in three things, right? They're they're parametric in what channel you're listening on, which I think is what you have highlighted right now. Yeah, that's probably. And then uh, in what names are getting bound. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's like wild card and you just don't say anything about it. Uh, oh, this wild. one is discarded. Yeah. What? This one is is discarded because you you don't need uh, you don't need this name. Uh, this A is replaced with a uh, with a bound name, mm -hmm. X zero. So uh, what? Uh, so this A is not relevant anymore because you you don't care about. This is like a stru structural equivalent, and you are forgetting that this, this is like a syntax thing that you do want, you you want to forget. Well, it, it's a little bit interesting though because you do need to know what it is, right? Because like the the variable that you use there, or whatever, uh, dictates the substitution that happens when like the you know the comma event happens. So I don't yeah, know how yeah. you can to that, but but uh, you, you you substitute it when when you uh, when you when you want to make a structural equivalence, you substitute it with, with your bound name, yeah. so you don't care about it anymore. Okay. In, in that sense, this is like a, a forgotten in in the yeah in the uh, Isaac. Are you starting to get that? I I'm not understanding that at all. I think so. Okay, so what I can I, show you, I can show you the parts of the code. Oh yeah, the, that would be okay. great. So but, so what I took away from that was um we don't really care what name we give to the the bound name because it, it's it's bound and we're just going to substitute something else for it anyways. That yeah. that's what I took away from that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But, but we still have to distinguish them, right? There's more than one. In general, there's more than one, and I need to know which one to substitute for. So I don't care whether you oh, call it A or oh, zero. Oh, oh, oh. I, can, I, can show you, I can show you an example for that. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my continuation is A par B. Like, which one am I, which, which is the pattern I'm looking for, for A or B? Yeah, or yeah. yeah I, I, can, I can make a, another, uh, another uh, nesting. Because if you don't, if you don't have a, a, a receive, you don't have nesting. So you, you, right. this is the only case when you when you want to substitute something. Yeah. So right. that makes sense. when you have uh, a B, so this is like a different uh, uh, name mm -hmm. uh, that will be uh, bound, and uh, I, I will use the A from the from the first like a fr fr from first bound name, okay. and I will use the second. Like the second bound name, I will send on the B something to you guys know. So now, now you can see that A is one, bound one, and B is bound zero. Mm -hmm. So in each nesting, you, you just increment your, this is why uh, this height is uh, here. With, with each nesting, your bound name is uh, one more. This is like the, 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 the Bruin index. You're, you're just uh, counting the nesting. And for each nesting, because you don't have holes, for each nesting, you just count uh, uh, plus one. Oh, that's so wild. I, uh, so like a month ago, when I was first trying to do this row calc implementation, I was really worried about this issue. And I don't know why I was really worried about this issue, but what you just said makes it sound like uh, I I kind of like foresaw this De Bruyne index thing as an issue, but I, I you know like I don't know why I thought it was an issue. Uh, I was I was copying this function uh, when Greg was uh, uh, giving us a lecture from his example in in uh, in Haskell. Yeah, cool. Uh, he was uh, this is like a, really the copy of of, uh, of his example, and oh, cool. he was doing the the Brunifying uh, uh, thing, and if you execute uh, this code, so if you have P2, which is just receive, mm -hmm. uh, he generates this uh, a special name. Uh, this is like a, I, I call it the bound name, but this is like the special name. You, you just, just made it up. Yeah. And, and he called this, uh, call, call this, call this address. And you, you just replace uh, uh, anything uh, uh, in, in the form that must be bound. You just replace with the, with these counting names. You just you have infinite number of names, and you you just counting the nesting. And uh, because uh, why are you doing this? You are only interested to see if uh, if uh, if two terms are the same. So you you're not care you're not caring about uh, you're you're just caring about how uh, many nesting have this term, both of these terms, and. If all the other all the other stuff are the same and the nesting is the same, they are the same. Okay. 
this is why you are just making up names because in, in both terms you will you will be replacing this in, in the same in the same uh, way. Okay. Does this make sense? Yeah, I I think so. So um, so are are you are are you keeping track of like some sort of mapping between like these indices and the variables that you're you're uh, replacing for the indices? Oh yeah, yeah. This is a good question. Uh, what, what I'm doing in, in, a, in a, like a printer, I don't have this information. I, I recreate it from the height. Oh. Because I, I don't have this information. But I know how many nestings are there, and I know the height. And the, the, this is why uh, this data type is uh, like very convenient. So just to, just to make sure I understand, are you claiming that the, the depth that or height at which something is nested is uniquely like that alone is enough to tell what variable it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because if so, you have so in your example, you you did the most recent example is nested two layers deep, right? So another example that's nested two layers deep is the same one, but but in the continuation, not not the innermost continuation, but the 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 outer layer of continuation. You have two fours in parallel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. Um, maybe yep. type it in the yep. yep. sure. Um, um, let's let write it. So you're saying okay, this is like a one. Yeah. And you yeah. want to have that's you not where I put the car though. Well yeah oh, no, no, other other inside it, one more. No no you yeah. now we want to have uh, one more. This example is not what I'm describing, although it may yeah. also work for what I'm yeah. describing. Well, you were saying push, push what he's writing inside that first bracket, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. There you so go. So here yep. you want to have yeah. five. Yeah. 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 So cool. there's two two uh, receives part together. Yeah, in the and, continuation of the first part or uh, and, receive. Uh, Oh, and you want to have what? What? What do we want to have here? At a uh, for, for C for C from A for C from A. Okay. From C. Okay. And uh, what do you think the the C will be? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I I'm not like doubting that you have this working. So I suspect no, 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 it'll no, be no. X. I, 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 I don't understand how. It no, works. no. Uh, my example maybe not working, but uh, what what do we are expecting? Uh, this is my question. Yeah, I think ideally A would be X0, B would be X1, and C would be X3. Yeah. Be uh, because uh, th this is the, like the, the, hmm. the, the same bound name. Right? Yeah. Uh, this because, is, yeah. Uh, just don't look if is this quoted or not, but uh, uh, this is X0 and this oh. is also X0. But this is, this is not uh, like a problem. Because this is like a bound in this process, and this is bound in this process, so it's not a problem. Oh, so why this is like a different nesting. You have different oh, branches; oh. they they share the same variables, but you don't care. You know, this is different branches. Who cares? Yeah, that's interesting. And and when you compare these different branches, you want to have the same. Uh, uh, you want to have a, a bound name. Uh, named in the same way. So you can compare these two branches and say, okay, are there structural equivalent or not? Or... Yeah, that makes sense. And, and when you put this, everything in multi-set, uh, you will just uh, compare the, 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 the sets and you, you know if the terms are structural. Uh, all right, hold on a second here. So should, should that second four there uh, after the par, should that say four at X zero? No, no, below. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. Please don't look and... and, and yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. also also the C should be at uh, X0, right? Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Here. Okay, okay, okay perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm working on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, okay, cool. I'm just, I'm just double checking because I'm not yeah. sure if uh, what my misunderstanding is from actually misunderstanding or, or if it's, you know, from looking at something that's that's not quite the way it's supposed to be. This is really be. clever. What's that? Um, this is really clever. Yeah. I'm yeah. still, I gotta wrap my head around it a little more, but that's something that's something good to think about. I, I totally agree that B and C don't have to have 
distinguishable names like yeah. I don't because know, the, on the second I don't uh, even know what you call uh, it. This name is only visible uh, in the nest nesting of right. this in, in this project. Right. Right. So so, so basically what it comes down to is you're saying because regardless of what we call the, the name that, you know, that pattern that we're listening for, it's coming from the same place. We can just call it the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And is this, this is a, called the De Bruyne index. I, I've heard that. I just, I'm not super familiar with it. Yeah. It's, it's usually, uh, I, I think that it's usually used in, in like specifying variables yeah okay okay because you want to like get rid of the the, the free names yeah so i thought and, i saw somewhere floating around here you had a class called process semantics yeah this is the one where is that yeah, class I, I, maybe i can explain you first what what, what are the, these files so this uh, final is uh, like a final like, encoding. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, this is what I wanted to see. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, I, I done this uh, uh, when Greg uh, uh, having a lecture. Uh, and now I'm I like extending this. And, uh, oh, nice. This is specification of, uh, of uh, this. Uh, I, I call this semantics as uh, Ole Kiselov calls this semantics because you, uh, uh, this is specification in this final encoding. This is like a functions that uh, this is not structure. This is like a functions or, or terms of uh, of your language. Okay. And uh, uh, this is like a re recursive. Uh, uh, the processes uh, 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 can be quoted by by names and vice versa. Hmm. And. And this is a type family, uh, uh, this is like a type level function, which uh, I use this. Uh, I, I was, uh, I was uh, like uh, watching this uh, example, uh, Greg's example in Haskell, and uh, he's using the, uh, uh, their uh, funct functional dependencies. And with functional dependencies, it's, it's a, like a different, you, you use it differently. And uh, for me, this is like a more, Understandable, <laughs> so I, I use this this type, type values. So, what is the what's the T name T process about? Is it like type? Uh, T name. Yeah, because you have like type family T name P, and family T process N. Yeah, the, uh, this is like a uh, like an open type, and uh, I'm I'm saying here uh, I'm not defining uh, what is the exact structure of the name. I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, so how can you look at this uh, type family? This is like a different uh, way of specifying uh, function. Yeah. Uh, nor uh, normally, this function, uh, if, if it's not a type level, it will be specified like this so, somehow. T name uh, type. Or, or, Previously, this this was a star in Haskell because you you are creating a type. Okay. You, you, uh, so wait, what's, later, the, what's the name of the type here? It's it's T name. Uh, uh, no, T name is the name of the function that, oh, that gives okay. something. It will create type. Yeah. Okay. 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 That makes sense. Cool. The, okay. The, so. This is this is why this is a type family, uh, 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 like a extension. Okay, great. So you you put in some p and uh, into t name, and it will output some some type. Type, yeah. yeah okay. And I'm using this when when I want to specify a concrete structure. Uh, I'm saying, okay, this t name, I'm giving this uh, process type. Yeah. With the multi sets, and this will produce a name type, and. Okay. Like in recursion is uh, uh, in, in opposite way. Uh, I'm using t process function. When I'm giving uh, this function a, a name type, uh, I will get process uh, a type. Okay. Oh so wait. It's so a very nice definition. So what is? Okay. So wait. What what's the purpose of it? So it's like you have some kind of like a, like a process pattern, and when you fill it in with a name, you now have a process. Is that kind of what T process is doing, or? 
yeah, this is like a, a, here is the here is the uh, like a, the some kind of interface, and uh, here is the implementation. Okay. Because I, I don't I don't want to say uh, which concrete concrete uh, uh, structure uh, this must be. Oh. I want to say okay for any for any uh, 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 structure that you want to have later implemented, you can use it. Okay, cool. So, so in this slide here, this uh, P and N are just variables, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, okay great. And then uh, in that other slide, that was like concrete. Concretely, you're putting processes in for for P, and you're putting names in for N, basically. Yes. Okay, yes. great. Okay, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. And yeah, I I, I added this like a literal for 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 my names. <laughs> And I put uh, variables in, in inside. Oh, I think this is this is why I'm having problems uh, because they they do not fit uh, inside the names. So I will definitely do your style your your style of ground process. Yeah, I have a really stupid question. So when you say when you say literal, you mean like I, I just type some characters in, or what does that mean? Uh, I mean uh, these ground processes like bool, integer, oh. string. Yeah, duh. Okay, okay, great. I, I, will, I will definitely extend this uh, uh, some kind of ground here. Uh -huh. I would say I will ex extend this process language with yeah. maybe literal. Yeah. But I, I don't want to say literal, you know, it's, it's very, for me, this is like a, I, I don't want to say something like that because I'm, I'm specifying concrete type and I, I don't want to say concrete type. Yeah. So I can I can show you the example with uh, with the context that uh, okay. Greg, Greg was telling us. So he was extending the the, the process language with the uh, update and, and the call. Yeah. And with the third with the third like a third uh, a third language for context. So now we have a mix uh, from this uh, three uh, from these three uh, uh, different structures. And, and, and now I want to implement this because now I I, I, I will try to use uh, this two uh, as a as a way to specify uh, all the variables and everything. Cool. I'm not sh exactly sure how to do it, but now I'm m much closer because I, I had the problems with with uh, with this implementation of, of variables. So. Um, so, so is there is there some sort of like built-in uh, substitution mechanism in uh, in Haskell, or how are you doing the substitution? Because like you're you're substituting these x zeros for a, for example. Like how how is that actually happening? Uh, I'm doing this uh, here in, in uh, implementation of uh, like. Implementation of of, yeah. of of this. Okay, so so you you do you just have some substitute function, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And it's it's really, uh, uh, it's 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 uh, like I'm using the the Jake's example. I'm I'm just uh, putting this everything in in a multi set, and when I compare it, uh, it it like I'm getting a structural equivalence for for free. You get structural equivalence for free. Yeah, because it is, it is in, in, in multi set, but I have different problems with, with this structure. It's it, it, it easy to substitute, and you know, but when you want to compare, when you want to analyze these processes more more like a, in, in in different ways, then you must map over over this uh, multi set, and you, I'm, so I'm. Now, now I'm now I'm not not so convinced that uh, uh, this structure is convenient. Hmm. I, I'm thinking that uh, uh, more convenient structure is, uh, is just to use uh, these terms uh, very similar to, to your K framework. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, you just collect all of this stuff. And only thing that uh, now I want to extend, I want to uh, have a multi set of these processes in, in a par, but only in a par. So I don't want to have a record. I want to have uh, this uh, like a uh, sum type for for each. Uh, yeah. 
So and, and okay, so this is so you have data process, right? I have a question about syntax. What is a? Oh no, I just I okay, I get I get it. Um, what is the difference? So, hmm, what am I trying to say? So eval is just dequote, right? Yeah. On line thirty-one. That's, that's what I've been calling reapply. Oh. Yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah. then so so then there's also. This makes total sense. Data process equals that. I have something nearly identical to that. What is the what is the process semantics class, and why does it reproduce all of those things? Input, output, par, eval. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> uh, I said that uh, this uh, uh, this is uh, like a final definition of uh, of a language, and uh, this is initial definition. And uh, this is like you have two different representation. And you're right, just okay. So, so by final and initial, you mean like originally you tried this stuff on line twenty six, but it didn't work out. And no, no, no. no. These, these, these definitions are like a categorical definition. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But yeah, this, I, I probably cannot explain this uh, like correctly. Oh. Okay. I, I'm, I'm using these terms uh, uh, as uh, all like sell on, on his uh, on his examples. Like I, I, I sent you a link. Uh, all like sell. I, oh, cool. I think I pronounced it correctly. Yeah, okay. And uh, okay. Uh, and we, uh, from these two definitions, uh, you have some kind of uh, uh, like a uh, cycle. You can go from run, run representation to the other. And when you, when you do this, uh, you forget something. Because from, from final definition, you're calling this function. And in the in initial definition, you have like a multi-set or some kind of collection. And when you put this in, co in collection, uh, I, I remember this uh, uh, Christian explain, uh, uh, when Christian was explaining this. When you put this in collection, you're forgetting something. You're, you're forgetting this syntactic, uh, syntactic uh, 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 stuff that you want to, like, uh, that you want to say this is like a structure or alpha equivalent, but I don't, I don't care about it. So, in this uh, uh, instance, in Haskell, you are saying, okay, I'm implementing this language, this like a, a final uh, uh, representation, and I'm transferring this to, uh, uh, to my initial representation. I'm, I'm transferring this to collection. So I have, a, like, I have a terms that I'm, I want to uh, uh, transform to, uh, to a collection of terms. And in, in this transformation, uh, I can do structural equivalence and substitutions and, and everything else. So when I use uh, this uh, initial, this initial form, this collection, I can just you know easily uh, uh, see what is a uh, structural equivalent or, or uh, everything else. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. And in, in, in Haskell with, with type families, this is like very, very uh, succinct or, or like very nice. And it's, it's very similar to, to K framework, which, which is like surprising to me. Yeah, what is, um, what is a type family? Are you talking about like subtyping? Uh, uh, type family is, uh, is coming from, uh, from, uh, uh, from dependent type languages. Okay. So okay. they're 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 putting this in Haskell for for what kind of word? what kind of type languages? Dependently. D dependently type. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I've heard of that. I'm not sure what it means exactly though. Uh, yeah. It, same. So you can you, you can have a, a function uh, on the type level. So you can you, you can say okay my fun my uh, uh, I, I'm defining some kind of function for example, and I'm saying that uh, return type. Is not something that some some static type. I mean, you, you can say right. it will be calculated side conditions or something. Uh, but in in a sense, because you you are saying uh, this is like a normal function. I will I will execute this function, and I will get the type of the result. Yeah. So th this is like a connection between a value system and the type system, because you can. Uh, you can say, uh, uh, I can use uh, uh, 
one, two, three, like an integer, which is a, a real value, uh, to execute the function on the type level, and I can differentiate and, and, and I can say different type for, for each number. So I can say, okay, if, if, you, if, you, if you call it with one, uh, this will be uh, integer. If you call it with two, this will be string. That sounds pretty useful. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, I mean, like, I see it as, as like a future of programming. Like a, oh, cool. This is like a, some kind of a reflection. The, the, this is why I think the, the, the raw calculus is it's part of it, because you, know, you have this kind of, uh, you, you, you can do this kind of thing. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, now as uh, anybody is describing things, I'm like, how can I code that in K framework, you know? And so like, I think I might have an idea as to how I could uh, make like some dependent types in, in K framework, but I, I would definitely be uh, experimenting for a while to get that up and running. Oh, that would be cool. Definitely. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll write that down too. So, and uh, yeah, uh, for, uh, for the parser, I'm, I'm parsing this to, uh, to the final representation. Uh, and I'm, I'm using uh, these, uh, uh, these functions. So this four is really a function from my uh, uh, final encoding. And the only problem that I have is that I must specify the concrete type, concrete structure. And I don't, don't want it. Uh, uh, this is why I have this uh, uh, 1A example, where the parser is different. The parser is completely abstract. So I can say my four is only depend on process semantics. You know, it's, it doesn't say which the, the concrete type, but I'm using the, I'm using the uh, this uh, undecidable superclasses extension, <laughs> and what's an undecidable superclass? That sounds cool. Yeah, I, I found out that I can use it to 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 specify these uh, uh, these cycles of types. Oh, so I can I can say not only my uh, process semantics uh, uh, depend on on this p variable. This p variables is is the same as the name of p. So it's like a cycle. <laughs> oh, and, I see what you were saying when you said this is like reflection, because uh, yeah, this is this, it's like a domain equation for uh, for row calculator or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and, and this is the function because I'm I'm saying when you give me whatever this p is, I will just uh, uh, call this function p name and I will get this name structure. Whoa. <laughs> and, and this is like a very cool and I was thinking that this will work and but it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work. Oh, come no. on. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's compiles, but uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a runtime, it's, I get the error. So oh, I get the infinite yeah. cycle error. But I, I think there, there must be a way to specify this, but I don't know. <laughs> so you're like, you're almost uh, just like asserting a fixed point to some operator, right? Yeah, yeah, because I want to fix point uh, on the type level. Yeah. And I really don't know how to do it in Haskell. Like the, it, this is like a complicated example. I, I can do it like a simple example, but if you have this cycle, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I need some other new type, yeah. new data type, you know, just to, to, to specify this, but I'm not there yet. Uh, dude, that sounds super cool. I, I know nothing about Haskell, but uh, that, that sounds really cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and, so and because of this... This was the difference between 1 and 1A. One this, this, yeah, this is uh, like a business trick. Class, this trick. Yeah, I can nice. put it here. Yeah, so basically your, your whole thing is you're trying to keep the polymorphism here, but you're saying you can't get it to, to run properly unless you Yeah, it. yeah, and, and this is why uh, uh, this uh, parser uh, doesn't depend uh, on, on the concrete type yeah. because he knows from this process semantics uh, what, how to get the name semantics, you know. And if, uh, from, from this example, it doesn't know. So, 
Yeah, interesting. He, 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 he doesn't know what is the, the name, or only from processing it. Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. I, can, I can actually use the parser for, for different structure, and I want that, but yeah. It's not so horrible, but. Yeah, that's yeah, but I couldn't have it yet. Yeah, this is what I have. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it does a bunch already. It's got ground terms and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I will I will fix the, the ground terms and put it in the process. And this should be like a much better. And I, I will definitely have uh, process variables and name variables. I will have that. So I can like a completely replace and have all the information from, from the initial things. Yeah. Nice. Cool, man. Um, right. did you you wanted to show us some stuff too, right, Joshy? Um, yeah, I'm getting pretty tired and hungry though. I was gonna say, um, yeah, what what time is it? It's probably it's like noon. It's noon already. I could go. I could go next week probably. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to jump off. Um, nice. And uh, the recording will stop. Uh, All right. Sounds good. See you, Jim. See you. Thanks, Jim. All Thanks. right, everybody.